Busted World of Sports. Ahoy! How are we doing here? Happy Sunday. We're all ready for the NRL Sunday ticket. And I have... I have a little co-host at the moment because right now in Brisbane, where I'm located, it is absolutely bucketing down rain, storm, everything, buggering down outside, thunder, lightning, you name it, and this little one here gets a little bit terrified when it's storm time, so she's going to be staying right here for a little bit until she calms down. Anyways, welcome along, everybody, to the Sunday ticket. I was very disappointed that I didn't get to stream the games yesterday because they turned out to be fantastic, didn't they? How about, first and foremost, the Bulldogs with the upset over the storm? How good was that? And, of course, a great game again for the Dolphins, the Redcliffe Dolphins. The NRL can try and tell us they're not Redcliffe all they want. But they're bloody Red Cliff. That's just how it is. Dustin Fisher, ahoy. Hooper Productions, thank you very much for the kind words. <clears throat> Dustin Fisher, you lost money yesterday. Well, I've been losing money all year. All last year, too. No, actually, last year... Last year, I would say, we well and truly broke even in the Wasted World of Sports multis. Well and truly broke even, at least. If not, a little bit up. But we are definitely down. All thanks to Micah Sivo. Micah bloody Sivo. If he had have just scored a try in round one, we would have already been $300 up on the multis, and we'd be laughing. Instead, need one to pay off. Need one to pay off. Quick smart. Speaking of uh, of bets, though, and, and multis and whatnot, let's jump straight into it. This game today, well, the first game today, West Tigers, Newcastle Knights. Newcastle Knights are, of course, my tip for the wooden spoon this season. And in round one, they did everything possible to prove that to be accurate. The West Tigers, I tipped to be one of the big improvers of this season. And they did everything possible last week to try and prove me wrong in that prediction. So hopefully the Tigers have got a lot more upside, I believe, than the Knights. So we'll see. I've gone with the Tigers because I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for them. I'd written them off last week along with the Sharks. And look at what the Sharks were able to do. They were able to turn their form around very rapidly indeed. And I think a big part of it is going to come down to this man, Appy Corusau, the captain. I remember discussing it at the time, why they started Corusau from the bench. And maybe, perhaps, he was nursing a little bit of a niggle, wasn't quite at 100%. But he really needs to step up this week. He's going to be starting which if he was 100%, he definitely should have been starting last week as well. But he's definitely starting this week, and he's got a lead from the front, the captaincy and everything. There'll be a bit of pressure on him to perform, but Appy is a big game player, and he's been brought to the club to make a difference. Let's see that difference start this week. So much so that I think I'm just going to have to put you down there for a second. Okay. There you go. You'll be okay. So much so, I'm actually very curious to see what's happening in the try scorer markets. So, before this one gets underway, let's figure out what we're going to do here. So, I'm going to jump over to Sportsbet, and we'll see what we've got available to us. So, I'm very, very tempted to throw something down here today. I just want to see, okay, any time try score a market is what I'll have a look at. Appy Corusau, where is he? Corusau's paying $4.90 in the any time try score a market. I think we'll go ahead and we'll throw Appy Corusau in a multi. 
I understand that Coruscant is not a frequent try scorer by any stretch of the imagination. But as I said, he's, I think he's going to be looking for work. So much so, I hope he doesn't overplay his own hand. But I'm expecting a big game from, from Coruscant. So let's go ahead and go. North Aluma is always a good bet for any time try. So let's go. North Aluma, any time try scorer. Coruscant, any time try scorer, because he's going to boost my odds up. And we need to pick somebody from the Knights. Let's go the returning Dane Gagai. Dane Gagai is another player who is going to be looking to make a difference coming back into the team. So that gives me three legs at $21 odds. I like that. I can, uh, I've got a bonus bet available to me. How did that transpire? Oh, well, I'm going to use my bonus bet. Why not? Bonus bet, of course, means I don't get a return. No bet return should a leg fail, but that's what I've gone with. David Norfoluma, Api Corusau, and Dane Gagai, anytime try scorers. Captain Redbeard, ahoy there, mate. I didn't see the dogs. I'll tell you what happened. This is what happened yesterday, and this is the reason why I didn't get around to streaming any of yesterday's games, because... I, I thought, I mean, obviously, we, ha we had a big Friday night. Friday night was massive. <laughs> Jake Ponchi, ahoy there. First time here. Well, welcome along, mate. Let's have a, a, a cheers to Jake's first time. So, obviously, Friday night was a very big one, the Broncos-Cowboys game. And uh, Michelle and I kicked on. A little bit after that, the party continued. So it ended up being quite a quite a big night. So I thought to myself, I will have a power nap and get up and stream the games. <laughs> well, everybody knows what happens when you play nap roulette, right? You don't set an alarm, you just you just go take a nap and rely on your body clock to get you up. Yeah, whenever I play Nap Roulette, I generally lose. And lose, I did. And what a couple of great games that I missed out on. The Bulldogs put in the performance I've been waiting for for about three seasons now. Three seasons I've been tipping the changing fortunes of the Bulldogs. And they put in a performance that really gives everybody who's been predicting that hope that it may actually happen after all. Because they were abysmal last week. That was so bad last week. I didn't give them a snowballs of beating the storm. Boy, did they come out. And really make a statement. Ed Vogel. Ahoy there, mate. Crusaders did lose to the Fiji and Drua. England lost big time to France and the Six Nations. Big time. That was massive. You know, I actually thought... I actually thought for a moment when I saw the scoreline in that game that it was the under-20s, because I know the under-20s Six Nations is happening at the moment too, isn't it? And there's been some big, big scorelines in the in the under-20s. So I thought that was just England versus France in the under-20s, but it wasn't. And now all the memes are doing the rounds of Eddie Jones with a big smile on his face going, you see, and you thought I was the problem. It's great stuff, really. T33, Wests or Knights? I am on board with the Tigers today. Uh, England, definitely not. No, I would say France. I've been saying France are the dark horses. France would be the dark horse for the Rugby World Cup. Is it too early to promote the Rugby World Cup? Probably is. <laughs> it probably is too early, but obviously right here on Wasted World of Sports, we will be streaming the... Uh, there's a there's a close-up of the Honey Badger's balls that I did not need to see. Thank you very much for that commercial. Um, yes, very good stuff. Rugby World Cup coming up at the end of the year. 
My early prediction was that it would be uh, France. <clears throat> I think France have got a very good chance. I thought Ireland as well. Ireland would be uh, Ireland would be a little bit further along than they actually are. Come on, God damn it! My button's not working. Ireland have actually transpired to be a little bit disappointing, haven't they? They've fallen off, dropped back a little bit, the Irish. Shaka Hearts, ahoy there, mate. Bow unit, up the Tigers, indeed. I am well and truly on board with the Tigers here. Tigers tonight. Well, this is a big, big problem with the Rugby World Cup. They have to, because of... Ah, there we go. I got it working. Sorry. I got a bit distracted with my buttons. This is the problem with the Rugby World Cup. And I realize that this is a... Um, I understand this is an NRL stream. But it's been asked in the chat room, so we're going to talk about it. The problem with the Rugby World Cup is they do the seedings, what, what something like four, four or five years out. Something like that. Even longer, maybe. Maybe it's on a six- or eight-year rotation. Because as soon as one Rugby World Cup is over, the following year they announce all the, all the groups and scheduling for the Rugby World Cup the following one, which is, of course, four years away or three years at that point. Ridiculous. So much can change in the space of three years, and we're seeing it happen. France, New Zealand, Ireland, all in the same group. Somebody's going to have to miss out. Somebody doesn't deserve to miss out in that list. Anyway, uh, Jake Ponchi, just a question. Will you stream at 6 What's happening at six? Is that the next game? If it's the next game, I will probably stay on because I'm in a good mood today for some reason. Did I put my bet on? I did. Norfoluma, Coruscant, and Yagai, anytime try scorers. So, yes, we'll probably stick around for the Titans Dragons game. I'm curious to see how the Dragons go. We haven't seen them yet. Obviously, with the uneven number of teams in the competition, somebody has to have a bye every week. And it was the Dragons who had the bye in week one. Lucky them. Lucky Miller running out for the Knights. Of course, he came from the Sharks. Let's switch over to the game screen. The teams are out on the field now. Getting ready to kick this one off. Lucky Miller... Struggling for game time at the Sharks because he's stuck behind Will Kennedy. Uh, Jake says, just a question. Are you a para fan? And no, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm a Shark supporter. So as you can, maybe that's why I'm in a good mood. Because <laughs> the Sharks actually won this weekend. That could explain it. Ed Vogel says, Knights will miss the Super Round this year because of the odd number of teams. Yes, I understand they're getting a very handsome payout f from the NRL for missing it, though. So, they'll be right. And we are underway here at Leichhardt. Both teams would be disappointed with their performances last weekend. Both will be looking to lift. And it is the Knights with first use of the ball as the Tigers kick off and get us underway. And just a reminder uh, to check out our free Discord server if you would like to check out the actual gameplay as well. If you don't have access to the gameplay, usually I patch my commentary in over the top of that as well. But the fact that it's been storming here today, I thought it was just a little bit too much on the audio quality. 
Through the streams, okay, because through YouTube, through the broadcasting software, I can do all my audio filters that block out the storm. You would have no idea that it is raining behind me right now. You wouldn't be able to hear the rain and the thunder and all of that, but it, were I to were I to patch into Discord today. So, yeah, I'm sorry, but if you're on Discord, you're stuck with the TV commentary. And if you like the TV commentary, there's probably no reason for you to be here. Oh, Pong! Pong is down! Ponga is down and out! A man with a history of concussions. A big history of concussions, and he can't even stand right now. He has been KO'd. And what a big moment in this game early. A minute and a half gone. Ponga cops a leading shoulder to the face. And he was out before he hit the ground. Boom. He was out before he hit the deck and he knows he is off. There has to be zero chance. Zero chance, I would say, that he passes a HIA. I don't think we even waited for the independent doctor there he just got up and dropped his head and went no nah, i'm done fifth and last tigers anyway that's huge not that i think it matters greatly i mean kalen pong is not a number six <laughs> tackle one the knights though but that is a massive moment in the context of this game kalen ponga i might not rate him as highly as other people do but he's obviously huge for the knights so for him to be gone in the first minute and a half of the game would be a massive, massive moment. Huge news there. Dominic Young with a hit up. They're doing it through the backs at the moment, the Knights. Stuck in their own half. Fifth and last. They're only just outside the 30-meter line. Tyson Gamble is on the field. I think it's Tyson Gamble. Yes, it is. Tyson Gamble is on the field for Kalen Ponga. And Dane Laurie takes it for the Tigers, and he skips away from one, breaks through another tackle. Dane Laurie with a great return. And just like last week, the Tigers are full of energy to start this game. Just like they were against the Titans, making easy meters at will. They could. Oh, and now Dane Laurie's injured in that tackle as the Tigers get a six again. For a ruck infringement. Dane Laurie's got a problem in back play now. So we are three minutes into this contest. Ponga is off for a HIA. And Dane Laurie is struggling in back play with a shoulder concern. He's back in the line now. Left hand edge they go. And it pops out of the hands of Brent Naden. And Dominic Young nearly gets away. And it's been called a knock on by the Knights. How? John Curtin, ahoy there, mate. Yes, so uh, yeah, I wasn't doing the games yesterday. Unfortunately, I fell asleep. <laughs> I decided I would ha have a power nap. Why has this been called a knock? -on? This has been called a knock on by the the Tigers first, surely. It's been called a knock on by the Knights. Wow. The Tigers, I feel, have got away with that one as Brooks shows and goes on his own. It almost opened up. But they were caught offside there in the Knights' penalty. Take the two. You know what? They are not going to take the two this week, surely. Because what happened last week... What happened last week? They took the two, and then it all went downhill from there, didn't it? As Kalen Ponga looks a very downtrodden figure in the dressing room. I dare say his day is over. They're not taking the two. They're taking the scrum down in the middle of the field again. Of course, as we learned the other night, if you get two scrum penalties in a row, it's an automatic sin bin. Corusau off the base of the scrum. Dummies goes on his own. I'm looking for him to have a big game today. Corusau's in my same game, multi. Anytime try scorer. As Clemmer keeps his feet, they're just five out now, the Tigers. Corus out to the left. 
Dewey running on his own. Draw and pass, boys. Draw and pass. Don't try and do it all on your own. Right-hand side now, Papalihi. To Offerhand Gawe. Another set restart. Coruscant dummies with a grubber kick. That was never happening on tackle one, surely. Still a metre out from the line, Tigers. Just one out stuff at the moment, though. And a short ball, a no-look ball to Utakamanu. And he loses the ball. And that is a big, big, big mistake on tackle two. Right in front of the post. Should have taken the two points, eh? Should have listened to our advice and taken the two. Shaka Hart says, two scrum penalties equals sin bin is a bit harsh, don't you think? Well, no. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, two immediately in a row, one after the other. Kalen Ponga, done. Officially done. Kalen Ponga has failed his HIA, but I think we all expected that. That was a massive, massive crunch to the noggin. And a man with a history of HIA and concussion, that's bad news. Oh, it's a great run from Braley out of dummy half. The Knights make their first real inroad, and Fitzgibbon gets up over halfway on tackle four. They keep it alive to the right-hand side. Sayafidi keeps his feet. They're having a big hug in the middle of the field there, too. Very big units. Papalihi and Sayafidi. Big man hugs in the middle of the field. High ball. Laurie is back. His shoulder's obviously all right now. He's worked out the kinks. And a great set of six for Newcastle. Sees the Tigers starting to bring the ball out. Ten out from their own line. And that was much better from the Knights. Braley out of dummy half. Set that up. And that's what they needed. Some front foot ball. Staines. Charlie Staines has grown into his role here at the Tigers. Coming from the Panthers, of course. Katoa up over halfway. Tigers back in Knights territory. Fifth and last. Short side. Dewey. Just dips it in over the top of the defensive line, and Lockie Miller is back there. Bounces kindly into his hands, but he is met by a wall of Tigers' defence, and they drive him back five metres, keeping the Knights on the back foot. They were up quickly there. The Tigers, and the, bo the ball bubbles out here. Was it off a Tiger's hand? It doesn't matter. Coruscant's got it. And that's zero tackle for the Tigers. Pressure on the Knights again. They just can't help themselves out at the moment, the Knights. Braley, the only player who's really stood up and done anything of note so far in the first 10 minutes. Third tackle, Tigers. They're 10, 10 metres out again. They go to the left. Brooks cut out ball across the face of the defence. Papali, he juggles and just wrangles it back in. Short ball by Brooks to Offerhan Gowie, and they're still a metre out. They need to be a little bit more adventurous here. Dewey. To, oh, that's a terrible pass from Kapoa. It's on the ground. It rolls along the ground. And the Tigers are just lacking that killer blow. They can't land it. They just don't quite have that same... What's the word? Those are the sorts of plays that you, your top teams finish off. They ice them. Those moments. The Tigers, passes, bobbling, passes going to ground. And the Knights survive again. And this is where the Knights are making inroads. Quickly out of dummy half. Coruscant's not able to square up. And that is a penalty. Penalty Knights. Ten minutes gone, nine and a half minutes to be totally precise. And it is nil all, Jake Ponchi, here at Leichhardt. Penalty to the Knights. This will take them up to the Tigers' 40-meter line. And if they can hold on to the ball, I dare say that they'll have an attacking kick at the end of this set. 
Is that barbed wire? There's, there's barbed wire. What are they expecting the people of Leichhardt to do? They've got barbed wire around the ground like it's a prison. Heel fries, ahoy there, mate. The Knights starting to set 30 out. A great position for them. Sayafidi with a big run. 10 more meters gained. Just 15 out from the line now. Big line up to the left, and that's where they go. Hastings, short ball. And it's a six again for inside 10. They go out to the right. Draw and pass. Draw and pass. Staines to Dominic Young. Staines gets suckered into that one. And it's a try for Newcastle. And this feels a lot like last week, which is bad news for the Tigers. The Tigers had all the early running against the Titans and could not ice those moments and get themselves on the board. And the Titans came back down the other end and scored very, very easily. And the Knights have done it here today as well. Straight down the other end. Piggyback down from a penalty. And an easy draw and pass backline play. And Dominic Young is on the, the receiving end of that. And Dominic Young is somebody who I seriously considered putting in my same game multi. Because he's always good for a try. I went with Dane Gagai instead. Maybe a slightly forward pass at the end there, but it would be pretty harsh to call that back. That would be nitpicking at its absolute finest. But Dane Gagai there, simple draw and pass to Young. Four zip kick to come. 12 minutes gone. Oh, the Tigers. What's going on? A great team on paper. Fantastic team on paper. Just can't quite seem to put it together. Six points to nil, Newcastle. The conversion from the sideline is successful by Jackson Hastings. Crazy scenes here again at Leichhardt. The crowd, if they were here last week, are probably sitting there going, oh, no, not again. I remember what happened last week. Anyway, as I always say, the first set of six after points is massive. So what can the Knights come up with? Braley out of dummy half, looking very threatening every time that he does that. And another good dart. Racing up quickly in defense. The Tigers, they, they don't want to give away another penalty here. No piggybacks upfield. And Newcastle on tackle three. 35 out. Braley puts it through the hands. No. Dummy to the left and decides to go on his own. Up over halfway, though. Back in Tigers' territory. Tyson Gamble, that was Tyson Gamble, of course. The big news from the game so far. Gamble on the field for Ponga, who's off. Failed a HIA in the first minute and a half of the game. Laurie takes the fifth and last kick. Straight down his throat. But this game has swung completely on its head. Trevor Markson, the Tigers are terrible. And here's a relieving penalty for the Tigers. That's what they needed. Pressure on the neck. Would that not be a crusher? I suppose they are, they are different. Pressure on the neck and a crusher. Whoa, he's just dropped on him. And that is a very fair penalty, actually. They are trying to stamp that out of the game. And he has just squashed him in that tackle. Now Braley in that tackle, copped a hit somewhere. Jaden Braley off for a HIA. Oh, and that's a really bad, really bad pressure on the neck tackle there. Charlie Staines, that could have been disastrous. Coach Adam O'Brien for the Knights. All he can do is put his hand on his head and go, what is happening here? Another HIA. Yeah. 
Ed Vogel says Hastings was a tie. He was too, wasn't he? Hastings was with the Tigers. Quite a decent looking player. But the Tigers have sort of put all their eggs in the uh, Luke Brooks basket, haven't they? The kick to touch doesn't go up to the halfway line. Not really what they would have been looking for. But they've now run over halfway here on tackle two. So can they launch something here, the Tigers? Off oh, and Gowie just shuffles it along. And Clemmer takes it up to the 40. Tackle three. Coruscant goes to the left where Brooks is waiting with Papalihi. Straightening. Big open side to the right now. Brooks goes on his own. Tries to step his way through. Fifth and last takes himself out of the kicking. Coruscant to Dewey. Laurie takes it to the line and puts the heaviest kick you will ever see in your life in. It's gone so far over the dead ball line. It's almost like he thought he was playing on two different fields. And now, just to add insult to injury, they are up too fast from the tap inside the 10. And another penalty to Newcastle. And things are just not clicking here for the Tigers again this week. Tigers Morris says Tigers missed two opportunities, dropped a golden ball. And it was the, it, yes, it was the Knights were going to score first. Yes, very early pressure and territory could not be converted to points for the Tigers indeed. Just like last week. This is very eerily similar to last week at the moment here. For the Tigers, as the Knights get the ball out to Gagai in space. Gagai keeping his feet. Gets away from one, two. Brent Naden gets himself stuck in an awkward position. And he's hurt his leg there. Hopefully for the Tigers, that's just a little bit of a cork, and he'll be all right. Tackle four, though. Knights on the attack again. Ten out. To the left. Hastings to the line. Short ball. A short ball to Fitzgibbon. And Fitzgibbon falls in the tackle, but he falls away from the defense. And it is another try for the Knights. Ten points to nil. Kick to come. And I was just saying how this is very reminiscent of last week. And a great short ball there. Tyson Gamble on the field for Kalen Pong. Kalen who? They don't need him. Tyson Gamble on. Hint of a forward pass. I mean, it was flat at best. But the try is scored. Newcastle jump out to 10 points to nil. And you just have to wonder what is what is going wrong with the Tigers. What is up with the Tigers? Dominic Young, 10 minutes. Lachlan Fitzgibbon, 15 minutes. After another fast start from the Tigers, they couldn't get any points to show for it. And everything just falling for Newcastle now. Tigers, can they get themselves back into this? We saw what happened last week. From right beside the post, Hastings... Oh, he's hooked it to the left. A disaster of an attempted conversion from Hastings. Morris says, damn, it looks like every time the Knights are in the Tigers 20, they pile up points. Horrible. They are scoring tries way too easily. Just like the Titans did last week. West Tigers, though, will be ruining those early opportunities again for the second week in a row. Early opportunities not converted. And they find themselves trying to come from behind. Second week in a row. 
17 and a half minutes gone here, though. 10 points to nil. Knights playing with freedom now. Siafidi running five meters across field. Trying to bump away from defenders. Can't do it. Tackle three here, Newcastle. Two line breaks to none in favor of Newcastle. Tells the story so far. Eight missed tackles by the Tigers. And that really tells the tale of the scoreline so far. Fifth and last night. They're still inside their own half. Just five meters. Their own side of halfway. It's back to Gamble. Gamble puts the higher ball. It's looping around in the air. Awkward for Laurie. Oh, it's North Luma, actually. It's off his face. And it's called a knock on. That went backwards, surely. They've got to challenge this, I dare say. They're not going to challenge it. North Luma. Well, it's, it's probably knocked on. Straight off North Luma's chin. And I thought it went backwards, but it's deemed to knock on. And pressure here now. Oh. Where are you off to, huh? Where are you off to? It's too loud in here, isn't it? A scrum for the Knights. 12 out from the Tigers line midfield. To the left with Hastings. Hastings with that short ball. Bradman best. It's called forward. This time it's forward. I thought the last one that led to the try was pretty flat. This one's actually been called. And Tigers off the hook. As the goat. The goat on YouTube says, go the Tigers. Ed Vogel says, Tigers need Harry Grant 2.0. What the Tigers need. I said, hey. I said nothing about Siri. Why is Siri talking to me? So the Tigers survive that. A little bit of luck. Risky offload in the tackle. Just 10 metres out from their own line. You don't want to be offloading in that situation. Ah, oh, thank you very much there for the... Uh, for the follow or sub there. Very much appreciate that. Apologies, I didn't see it in time to know who it was. Coruscant, flat ball from dummy half. They're up quick, the Knights. They're up too quick. And a very relieving penalty for the Tigers. Dewey thumps it into half, into touch just over halfway. They just need to put a set of six together here, the Tigers. Put a good play in at the end. Maybe don't give it to Dane Laurie to kick again on the fifth and last. Maybe somebody else to do it. <laughs> Tackle two, Tigers 30 out. Coruscant goes to the right. Out the back to Dewey. They've created space here. Kapoa bumps off one, bumps off two. We might have to come and have a look at interference here. It's gone up as a try for the Tigers. But this is going to get looked at, I dare say. Coruscant sees the space on the right. Dewey runs into a gap that's been left by the defense being taken out. Now, does that get called a defensive read? It can't really because he was in front of Coruscant when that happened. It wasn't Dewey that ran into that gap, though, but the space was created from the man being taken out. I dare say this one's going to get scrubbed out. And all the celebration as Kapoa dives over might just have to be reined in. I dare say the Tigers are getting this one scrubbed out. And here we go. We are going upstairs. Alex Twall running to the line. Lachlan Fitzgibbon takes... In my opinion, Lachlan Fitzgibbon has made the decision to make that tackle. So I think this is harsh. But I did also call it as it happened. 
And this is going to be a penalty. The Knights survive that one. Just to make matters worse for the Tigers, they don't get their four, potentially six points. And the Knights get a penalty that piggybacks them up to the Tigers' 40-meter line. There must be a slight breeze behind the Knights here in the first half. So scrub that one. Scrub those points. Uh, scrub those points. I said scrub those points. Uh oh, I've broken the scoreboard. <laughs> I've broken the scoreboard, damn it. 10 points to nil. Knights, five out from the line. They go to the right hand side. Hastings to Thompson, who comes back to the left. Six again for inside 10. Oh, and a little bobble from dummy half. The referee hasn't seen it. Might have been a knock-on that they've got away with there, the Knights. But they're tackle three now. Five out from the line. I'll fix that scoreboard in a minute. We need to keep an eye on the action here. Tackle three. A meter out from the line. They go to the left. Hastings looking dangerous again as Gamble. A huge cutout ball. But it is so far forward that Heimel Hunt can't even get fingertips on it. And the Tigers have... Aimed up on defense there this time. And they survive. And that could have been very, very disastrous. Tyson Gamble looking very dangerous every single time he touches the ball. All right. Robert M. Ahoy there, mate. How are you doing? Alex Twall takes the hit up. Tigers in tonight's territory again. They're lined up to the left, and they're just going through the hands, not really drawing anybody in, though. Not really putting any pressure on at all. Dewey, fifth and last, puts the ball up high. It is taken by Lockie Miller. Lockie Miller, honestly. He was a solid player when he was at the Sharks. Young skips away from one, breaks away from another one. Solid defense here. Tigers. Struggling to get out of their own territory. This set of six, though, the Knights. Fifth and last. Hastings puts the kick in. Deep kick. There is definitely some sort of breeze in behind the Knights here. And the Tigers start this set of six. Deep inside their own half. That was a great kick. In the circumstances, Tigers. Laurie now taking hit-ups. Third tackle for the Tigers. Up over halfway. Great run. The ball is stripped out by Tyson Gamble. And this has got to be a penalty. It is. And Jaden Braley. Jaden Braley has failed his HIA. Kalen Ponga out. With HIA, Jaden Braley has now also, for the Knights, failed his HIA. Things have gone from bad to worse for the Knights there. Tigers bobbling possession again on tackle one. Another mistake. Tackle one. Tigers. They just can't keep it together at the moment, can they? Getting in Knights territory. 
and making a mistake very early in the tackle count. Lockie Miller. Oh, boy. He's passed it across to Heimel Hunt, who bobbles the ball. He retains it. Knights on their own 40. Tackle three. Huge space out to the right, but just a settler here from Siafidi. Siafidi says, let's just tone things down a little bit here and get through this set because there's been a couple of mistakes in a row now for both teams. Fifth and last night's 40 out. Gamble puts it high to the left-hand edge, and it's bounced. It's been allowed to bounce. Dangerous stuff. That could have bounced absolutely anywhere. And luckily for the Tigers, it decides to go over the dead ball line. Shaka Hearts is back. Welcome back, mate. Heel Fries had the Tigers, then changed. Last minute. I'm still not necessarily convinced it's a tip worth changing, but boy, the Tigers have got some work to do again. 69% completion rate. 69% completion rate. We have this discussion pretty much every game. As Brooks finds some space, a short ball inside to Laurie is just brought down. Saya Fidi, of all people, with a diving bootlace tackle to save the try. And now a forward pass has been called against the Tigers. And they just can't win a trick at the moment, the poor Tigers, for the second week in a row. Things are just not going their way. They had an overlap to the left. What a tackle from Saya Fidi. A try saver. Dane Laurie clipped down. <laughs> uh, heel fries. I'm heel fries. I'm about uh, thirty-four. I think I'm about position thirty-four or twenty-four. I'm sitting comfortably in the midfield in the tipping contest anyway. So the Knights, once more. Oh, here's threatening th threatening to go through the gap. But just brought down by Papa Lee and co. is Phoenix Crossland. But the Knights, they're back into Tigers territory. And they are looking threatening again. Danger signs here for the Tigers. Fitzgibbon, it is, keeps his feet. Tackle four. 20 out. Midfield. They go to the right. Hastings out the back to Gamble. Frizzell keeps it alive to Miller, and it's shut down by the Tigers. And there's loose ball here, and the Tigers dive on it. Luke Brooks on the loose ball. Zero. Tackle. And that... A great result for the Tigers. They avoid any more damage, which has been looking likely every time the Knights come down here. Norfoluma does some stepping and keeps the ball alive. They swing it back to the left-hand edge now. Staines straightens up and goes to ground. So there was a lot of sideways movement there for the Tigers, but not a lot of forward movement. Here's some forward movement, though, as Brooks dummies and goes straight through the gap. One to beat. Draws in the... What a tackle by the fullback. Lockie Miller. But we've got a sin bin now. Dominic Young is off. It was a try-saving tackle on Luke Brooks by Lockie Miller. But Dominic Young has taken a man out off the ball and is now spending 10 minutes in the bin. They're going to captain's challenge this. But it seems a pretty foregone conclusion to me. Luke Brooks with the show and go. One to beat. Dummies to Brent Naden. And Naden is taken out by Dominic Young. And there is only one way this can go. Why would you captains challenge that? It was so blatant and so obvious. Cassie, ahoy there. Uh, about ten, nine and a half, roughly. Uh, nine and a half minutes to go till half time. And Dominic Young has just been marched from the field for 10 minutes. 
Well, surely that's you've got to give a consideration to a penalty try in that scenario. <laughs> I can't believe that captain's challenged that. That's amazing. The Newcastle Knights have been going to the Shane Watson School of Reviews. I did wonder what Watto was up to since retirement. Now I know. He's been doing review coaching in other sports. Big line up to the left here. Brooks. Brooks is doing a lot of showing and going tonight. This time he can't get through. It's tackle two for the Tigers. Five out. Dewey. Spots a gap, breaks away from another tackle, and he's still going, Dewey. Tackle three for the Tigers here, still five out. Coruscant runs across the defense, finds Clemmer straightening. Clemmer gets within two of the line. Tackle four. They really need to strike a six again. That's huge. Six again for the Tigers. Brooks, they've got the numbers to the left here. Naden goes on his own. And Frizzell puts a big hit in and shuts him down. But they've got a huge lineup now to the right. The pass from Dummy Half is terrible. Bounces across the face of the attack. Coruscant from Dummy Half. Straightening again as Twal. Tackle three, but not really looking threatening here, the Tigers. Coruscant to the right. Dewey. Laurie finds a gap. Stays alive. Keeps it up to Talau. And Talau's chopped down the this defense with a man down for the Knights. Impressive. Coruscant with the short ball. And the Tigers cough it up over the line. Has he got it down? Alex Twall. He doesn't seem all that confident. It's gone up as no try. And the Tigers. They are just not helping themselves at all here today. Twal has the ball knocked out. A try saver from Sayafidi. Not for the first time today, I must say. Sayafidi getting involved with a huge tackle. Oh, it was Tyson for Tyson Frizzell, sorry. Tyson Frizzell with the try saver. The Tigers are just not offering a team that is coached by Benji Marshall. They are offering very little in, in terms of attacking threat. It must be said these past couple of weeks, they don't seem like they know how to score tries. Very disappointing stuff. I've got no legs in my multi <laughs> so far. Well, unfortunately for me, in my three-leg multi, I've got two West Tigers try scorers. I'm struggling to see where the Tigers are going to get a try from. But the Knights, seven tackle set, and they are back in attacking range here. 35 out from the Tigers' line, fifth and last. Where's Gamble? Gamble is on the short side and just hammering it into touch. Gamble, they're playing 12-man footy now. The Knights, they just want to run that clock down and get Dominic Young back out there. A play of the ball, 20 out. Tigers have got to go all the way, all the way upfield. And get themselves back into attacking range. Oh, Coruscant with a loose ball out the back. Play to the whistle, and the whistle doesn't blow, and Dane Laurie gets an extra 20 metres off that loose ball. 
Front foot ball again for the Tigers. Taken to the line and they make a mistake again. It's been touched by the Knights though. So it will be six more. Zero tackle for the Tigers. Out to the right they go. Dewey, dummies, keeps the ball alive and it's knocked out of the hands. It's play on. It's play on. And Kapoa will get his try this time. He had one disallowed earlier. This time he gets his try. The Tigers get their try. Ten points to four. Kick to come. Tommy Talao is down. <laughs> what happened to him? We need to keep an eye on this. Adam Dewey gets himself through the gap. Bradman Best couldn't wrap that ball up. Hastings it is. Hastings in cover defense. Has whacked Talao across the face. And oh, and they've seen the replay on the big screen. And now the players are getting into it. Bring back the biff. Bring it back. A little bit of biff never hurt anybody. Well, except for the people getting hit, I dare say. But that's another matter altogether. Bring back the biff. But I dare say Jackson Hastings could be in a little bit of trouble here. Try is confirmed. But they've been cracking down severely on any sort of high contact so far this season. And I dare say Hastings could be in a little bit of strife here. The precedent's been set with head contact very early in NRL 2023. Here we go. Hastings is being called out. High contact. It's on report. Oh, and he's surviving a sin binning. But he's on report. Try is confirmed, though. And he's got to go off for HIA to allow. Honestly, if the contact is high and substantial enough for Talao to have to go off for a HIA, should it not be a sin binning? Really? Shouldn't it be? The contact is high enough and substantial enough that he's been called off for a HIA. Just a lack of consistency. Ten points to four, kick to come. Right beside the post, he shouldn't... Ma oh, well, he's, it's a little bit further out than I recall it being. So it's not that straightforward here from Dewey. But still, he should be making this conversion. Moves in, strikes it well, just stays inside that right-hand post. And it is 10 points to six. And the fans come to life. Can that bring some life into the Tigers here? 10 points to six. Four minutes to go. Three minutes to go till half time. And this kickoff. The kickoff is way too deep. Th that is the turning point. A penalty on halfway. It's out on the full. Scott Drinkwater can feel even more hard done by Shaka Hearts, especially considering it wasn't even him, I thought. Anyway, I didn't even think it was him that made contact. It was the Chad. <laughs> 
Out on the full from the restart, though, and the Tigers now will get another crack before half time. Twall takes the first hit up as Dominic Young still has three minutes in the sin bin. Coruscant runs from dummy half to the left. Brooks south the back to Laurie. Laurie knocks the ball backwards, luckily for the Tigers. And Gagai doing that body slam into the turf that he likes to do on smaller people. Cheeky bugger. And it's tackle three. Tigers still on the attack. 25 out, 20 out at the end of that run. Tackle four, midfield. Options to the left and right. Coruscant spots something to the left. Brooks steps back to the right and is chopped down. James Intox, ahoy, mate. Fifth and last, Coruscant out of dummy half, and Dewey, I think it was, made a complete mess of it and just drops the ball cold. No, it wasn't Dewey. Sorry, Dewey. Officer Dewey. Forgiveness, it's Brendan Tumuth. The youngster Tumuth drops the ball cold and off the hook again, the Knights. It was on there for the Tigers. Running was not necessarily a bad option. But uh, just the the skills just not quite there. Letting themselves down again through the ball handling. They're not handling their balls well today, the Tigers. A kick from Gamble on the fourth. Overcooks it. It's out on the full. And the Knights are just shooting them. This is another one of those games that nobody seems to want to win. A kickoff out on the full. And now an early kick from Gamble goes out on the full. And the Tigers, they will get another chance here before halftime. But let's see what glorious way they can cock it up this time. The final minute of the first half, Coruscant from dummy half finds Twall on the short ball. Second tackle, 23 out. Coruscant comes to the short side. Dewey threatens to kick, but he breaks through one tackle. He's brought down in cover defense. Third tackle, Coruscant runs on his own. Coruscant for the line. He's a metre short. Tackle four. Dewey out to the right. Laurie fires it back across left. The Tigers keep it alive and knock it on in a big, solid tackle by Frizzell and Siafidi, two of the biggest units on the field. Now there's two guys you do not want to get hit by one-on-one, -on -one, let alone when both of them are charging at you, and that will take us into the break. Ten points to six. Wow, that was a helter-skelter, as they say. Helter-skelter end to the first half. The Tigers just lacking that, that final punch. They're punching. They're connecting. Connecting with a left hook. Connecting with a right hook. And then they're lining up that final roundhouse to put the Knights away and score the try. And they just can't land the blow. Ten points to six at half time. The big news. The big news, though. The Knights have lost both Kalen Ponga and Braley, Jaden Braley, to head knocks. Both failed their HIA. Both off the field. Not coming back. Shaka Hart says both league and union have taken no tolerance approach to head contact. They certainly have. Brandy Alexander confirming everything that I've been saying in the first half. All right. Halftime here, 10 points to six. 
Oh, well, there you go. Tim Zhu has won the WBO Interim Super Welterweight title. So there you go. All right. Half time at Leichhardt Oval. 10 points to six in favor of the Knights. Oh, by the way, I've got the... Uh, let's go back up. Let's go back over to the chat here. I've got the... Uh... Okay, so I've got the, act the actual photo of the Wasted Water Sports keychains. Uh, Michelle says, did anyone hear Corey Parker ask Wayne Bennett yesterday, uh, is it the young men that keeps you in the game? <laughs> I bet uh, I bet Wayne had a bit of a, a sly smile at that one. <laughs> I didn't see that, but yes, that would have given me quite a giggle. Um, and I've asked for, uh, and I've asked, I've asked for a um, an actual photo of the uh, stress balls, but un unfortunately, they only sent me a concept photo. So that means that the stress balls aren't printed up yet, but uh, that's essentially what they're what they're going to be. So I'm I'm still waiting on the actual photo of the stress balls. All they sent me was a concept photo at this point, which means they're they're not done yet. But the Waste of Water Sports keychains are done and ready to ship out to me. So I'm looking forward to getting those. All right. Wasted World of Sports, half time. West Tigers, Newcastle Knights, Leichhardt Oval, 10 points to six. We have got a big finish coming up here, I dare say. And I'm going to have myself a quick break. Uh, I'll, cut, I'll answer questions when I come back. All right, I'll be right, right back. Theoretically, if I can even figure out how to go. All right. Wasted the world of sports. How are we doing? Half time here. Big, big finish to this game coming up. Ten points to six. Denson. Javon. Javon. Denson Javon over there on Facebook Live. Ahoy there, mate. Go the Tigers from PNG. So much support from PNG. Love to see it. As I always say, and you're probably all sick of hearing me say it. A very passionate and proud rugby league nation there, Papua New Guinea. Okay, so I've got some questions to catch up on. Uh, 
Somebody asked me about WrestleMania. We'll obviously be covering WrestleMania here at Wasted World of Sports. So what will I be doing with the NRL that day? Well, WrestleMania is on in the morning. So WrestleMania starts at um, April April 2nd and 3rd. Will Daylight Saving be over? Or is Daylight Saving still a thing? Because if it's still daylight saving, that means it starts even earlier in the day. So um, WrestleMania goes for a bloody long time, though, doesn't it? So I don't know. I reckon WrestleMania might be over by the time the uh, by the time the games kick off. But even if it doesn't, what have we got coming up that weekend? Sea Eagles Knights, 2 p.m. Oh, no, that's the first. Wait, what's... What's... I don't know. <laughs> the second and third, that would be a Sunday and a Monday. I'm wondering if that's right. I'll have to confirm that that information's actually accurate. I thought I lo- when I looked it up, I thought it said that it's the second and the third of April that it's on in Australia. But anyway, maybe it's not. Shack of Hearts, you're going to the rugby this coming week to see the Reds versus the Fijian Drua. Very nice. Very nice. The Fijian Drua. Oh, God, I've just spilled my drink everywhere, all over myself. Sunday and Monday. Okay, so I'm going to have to take Monday off work. Oh, geez, that's really... That's bad. I'm going to have to put in for that day off. Tomorrow, basically. <laughs> That's all good. I can do that. Because we've got to do WrestleMania. Exactly. We've got to do WrestleMania. <laughs> um, yeah, Shaka Hearts, anyways. Shaka Hearts, the Fijian Drua, they will be pumped up after their shock victory over the Crusaders. So your fear for the Queensland Reds, a pumped up Fiji and drew aside on the back of a big victory. Or alternatively, is that, is that Fiji and Drua's season right there? Are they just stoked to have claimed that scalp that they kind of, uh, I don't want to say slack off, but you know what I mean. Is that their one big game? Can they lift themselves again to get another victory? We will find out, I suppose. Very, very soon. Ah. So it's been an interesting game so far. This one, the Tigers are just lacking, just lacking in those, uh, just those final passes, holding on to the ball in contact, the fifth tackle options. If they can get that together in the second half, they will be much better situated, I dare say. But 60% completion rate. We've been talking about it. I've been talking about it with my dad. My dad's got uh, my dad's got his eye on the play the ball speeds. My dad's had his eye on the play the ball speeds. And I've had my eye on the completion rates. And we've kind of agreed in our conversations that perhaps it's more a combination of both than uh, than one over the other. But at the moment, a 62% completion rate for the Tigers is just not good enough to get the job done. 
I don't think the Knights will be very happy with their 75% either, but at least it's a, it's better than the Tigers. Average play the ball speed, Tigers 3.29 seconds, Knights 3.43 seconds. Uh, what did Michelle say? Queensland doesn't have daylight savings because it's a stupid state who thinks the cows will be confused and the curtains will fade. <laughs> Dustin Fisher, you're working on your resume. Very nice. Job hunting, are we? Cool, cool. I wonder what would happen if I applied to Channel 9 or something. That'd be rather hilarious. I wouldn't mind that. I am not in any way ready for such a role, and they are not ready for me. I think we discussed this last time. I always get a bit nervous, Jake Ponchi, when people ask me to say something. When people put in the chat, can you say this? I always get a bit worried because I'm thinking, why Why are you asking me to say this? Am I going to be on some sort of weird compilation video? Teams are out for the second half. <clears throat> we are ready to roll. Second half action, 10 points to 6 in favour of the Knights. But I will say they have only just been holding on and the Tigers have been doing their very best to allow them to hold on. The Tigers had all the momentum to start the game. They had all the momentum at the back end of the first half. Can they keep it going into the second half? They will get first use of the ball as the Knights kick off. And it's Naden with the first hit up. The Knights back to a full complement as well to start this second half. 13 on 13 again. Slow play the ball here. And not a very enthusiastic start to this second stanza at all from the Tigers. A step inside, nearly piercing through the gap, Seafarth. And they're up in tonight's territory. So they finished that set quite well, the Tigers. Fifth and last, 40 out. They stay on the blind side and Dewey keeps it low. There's nobody back. Well, there is. But he's very, very deep as Lockie Miller. Miller was very deep waiting for that ball. And Dewey saw a lot of space. Kicked it nicely in behind the defensive line. But racing forward, Lockie Miller covers it up. Holds onto the ball. And the Knights get away. Upfield. Tackle four. Gagai with the run brought down by three Tigers defenders still inside their own 40 here the the Knights fifth and last now they'll be forced into a defensive kick good set of six defensively from the Tigers gamble kicks it for the corner the wind hooks it back in field though and Laurie will bring this out and the Tigers will start 12 out from their own line Nobody back here for the Tigers. Very, very slow getting back. Staines up over the 30. Tackle three. Adam O'Brien looks so impressed. Coruscant with the inside ball to Clemmer. And Clemmer makes some good meters. Tackle four. The Tigers quickly out of dummy half goes Coruscant. Thought he spotted some space in behind the line there. Of the Knights' defence, but he's taken fifth and last back inside Knights' territory. Dewey this time goes high, a high looping bomb, and it's taken well by Miller, and he's back to his feet. And he gets away from one, he gets away from two, and he's still going on the outside now. Miller steps infield, and he's brought down from behind by Adam Dewey. 
But he's at the halfway line. What a kick return from Lockie Miller. Such a shame that he didn't find more game time at the Sharks because he probably would have stuck around and he was a very handy replacement for whenever Will Kennedy inevitably falls over. But it's the Knights now on the front foot. Tackle three. 30 out. Big open side to the left. But Siafidi straightens it in midfield. Tackle four. 20 out. Hastings. Campbell with the single most forward pass imaginable. And that will be the end of that play. And Tigers will get the ball back. Holding on once again, the Tigers. How far forward can you possibly throw the ball? Tommy Talau has fouled his HIA as well for the Tigers. So... We have lost three players from this game to HIA. Two from the Knights, one from the Tigers. Incredible. So many players. And that was the one from Hastings over the top, the one that we were talking about. He didn't even get a sin bin. And he's off for the rest of the game now. Foul in his HIA. And the offender gets off scot-free. But maybe maybe not in the judiciary. Twall with the hit-up. Back to the game. <laughs> Twall with the hit-up for the Tigers. Fourth tackle, halfway midfield. Coruscant spots a gap out of dummy half. Oh, he's coming to this game now, Coruscant. He's making so many meters from dummy half. They're running on the fifth and last. Dewey wraps around, gets the ball back, finds Kapoa. Kapoa has his head taken off. And this will be a penalty for the Tigers for a high shot. And this will be their first real opportunity now in the second half to try and get back on level pegging, if not take the ha, pegging, if not take the lead. Yes, a lazy arm over the top there. I think it was Lachlan Fitzgibbon. They put it into touch. They tap and go, and the Tigers tackle one. Ten out. Coruscant from dummy half again. He's looking threatening here in the second half. They're a meter out from the line. Coruscant to the right-hand side. Brooks out the back to Dewey. Dewey gets away from one. Goes on his own, though, Dewey. Pops the pass up, and it's intercepted by Gamble. And Adam Dewey has completely buggered that up. Adam Dewey with the brain fart of all brain farts. And now it's the Knights with front football. Gagai takes it up towards halfway. Gets a quick play the ball away. Front football here in Newcastle. Hastings is brought down. Just inside Tigers' territory for tackle four. Crossland sends it out left. And Siafidi with a settler for the fifth and last 60 metres off that set. Hastings puts the high ball into the corner. Laurie moves forward and attacks it and knocks it on. Advantage Newcastle on the back of Adam Dewey's brain explosion up the other end. It goes from bad to worse. We've got a captain's challenge, but I really don't know why. It was a very clear knock-on, but maybe they're hoping something untoward has happened in the process of that knock-on here, the Tigers. Well, Dane Laurie's picked the ball up. He's confident. Dane Laurie's very confident. He's picked the ball up. He thinks the Tigers are winning this one. Laurie moving forward, attacking the ball. Knocks it on. Maybe he's hoping that Dominic Young has got his arm in there and, and ripped the ball clear. Just looking to see if Dominic Young touched the ball prior to that. 
That's probably the only thing that's going to save him here. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a knock on. He's not happy about it, Laurie. He is not happy about it at all. Oh, the West Tigers. They are not making things easy on themselves to start this season. They threw it all away last week. The Titans' defense was incredibly impressive, though, must be said. And they're not making it easy on themselves this week either. Too many just basic errors. Off the scrum, the Knights go to the right. Miller steps back in field. Stepping, jinking, left, right, straightens up now and takes the tackle. 15 out from the line, midfield. They go right. And Hetherington just straight forward. He only knows one way. And then he air humps to try and get up and play the ball quickly. Sayafidi, he only knows one way as well. Tackle three here, Newcastle. They're a meter out from the line. Offside here on the right hand edge of the left hand defensive edge, but the right hand attacking edge, all offside with the Tigers. They get away with it though. And they were absolutely offside again. Frizzell straightens, comes back in field, and takes the fifth and last. They get six again there. Set restart for a ruck infringement. They could easily have been pinged for offsides the past couple of plays, but it's a ruck infringement given away. And on the fifth and last as well, just a nightmare scenario for the Tigers. Hetherington is driven backwards by three defenders. Tigers defense holding on, but the Knights tackle two. Short side play to Miller, to Gagai. Gagai tries to go on his own. The defense was up and shut him down on tackle three. Big open side to the left now. Hastings across to Miller. Sayafidi with the inside. Receives the inside pass and he's tackled. Right in front of the post. They stay left. Racing up is Kapoa. A tackle that had to be made on Tyson Gamble. Fifth and last. And that's the Knights kicking option taken away from them as well. Well, one of them. Hastings will step in though. Puts it across to Dom Young who flips it in field. And they are tackled fifth and last. Hand over ball. Tigers, solid defense. And we have time off as Tyson Frizzell struggling. Can't get to his feet. He's in a world of hurt there, Tyson. Got his, oh, he got his ankle twisted. Yeah, that looks nasty. He'll be fine. He's a big unit, but yeah, that that'll be that'll be corked for a little bit. <laughs> He's in a lot of pain. Maybe it's uh, a little bit worse than it um, first appeared. I mean, he'll be feeling that for a little while, but I just I don't think there's. I doubt it's broken. He's a big unit. He's a big unit with a big solid ankle. And that's going to sting for a while, but I dare say he'll be all right. Terrible position to be getting into, though. Oh, well. I take it all back. Off he goes, and he's been helped off the field. He has succumbed to that injury. Another man down for the Knights. The walking wounded. Uh, yes, he is, Michelle. Yes, he is. A big part of the Blues. Only 10 minutes gone in this second half. <clears throat> I 
And we'll need to keep an eye on that. That's huge for the Knights. Siafiti will need to step up and do double the work now, essentially, as Frizzell is carried off the field. Well, not carried. He's just helped off the field. He couldn't walk on his own. Pass to nobody here from the Tigers. It's getting a bit scrappy from them. Fifth and last. Just getting outside their own 40. Brooks from... Is he looking for a 40-20? Brooks. He hooks it. It's into touch, but I think he was outside the 40. Brooks is claiming the 40-20, but I'm pretty sure he stepped outside. Oh, we need to have a look at this. Forty twenty given. The forty twenty has been awarded. That was very, very close. And the Tigers, just what the doctor ordered. Twelve with the hit up. Now, no mistakes from the Tigers. Nothing silly needed. Right in front of the post, a couple of meters out from the line. This is where it's all gone horribly wrong for them so far today. Brooks out the back to Dewey. Dewey steps, keeps his feet, holds on to the ball this time, and goes to ground. He's not making that mistake again. Slow pass from dummy half. But Utikamanu just settles it in front of the post. Tackle four. Tigers midfield. They go to the left. Dummies for the short ball that goes out the back to Brooks to Laurie. And Laurie dummies outside, goes back inside on his own. Fifth and last. Brooks grubbers into the end goal. Gamble passes it to the invisible man standing behind the dead ball line. And that is a result for the Tigers. Uh, well, I've gone for the Tigers. I tipped the Tigers in this one. <laughs> Pretty much because I've predicted that the Knights are going to get the wooden spoon. My red-hot tip for the wooden spoon this season is the Newcastle Knights. Short dropout, and it's claimed by Naden. Up there, Gazali goes Brent Naden. Brooks running across field. Still going across field, Brooks. He needs somebody to straighten. Nobody was running inside. Brooks just throws his arms up. He can't believe nobody was ready for that inside ball. He, he ran across the length of the entire field almost, and nobody was running in the inside line. And all he can do is throw his hands up there, Brooks. Third tackle. A meter out from the line. They go to the right-hand edge. Brooks out to Dewey. Dewey out the back. Norfolk's got it. He's got nowhere to go. He steps inside, goes back out, fires the ball back in field, and a huge hit causes the error. Another mistake from the Tigers. And the Tigers are just offering nothing on attack. The Tigers just can't quite get it together. And the Knights will get the scrum. Still so long to go in this game. So much time left. There is no need for the Tigers to hit the panic button. Gagai getting close to the sideline. He has taken down in tackle one for the Knights. 35 out. They're up quickly on Young. Tackle two. Knights still on this right-hand edge. Their own 40. Big defense. Tigers. They've lifted. Why does it take a mistake and something stupid 
for the Tigers to get their act together and have these spells where they lift. Tackle four. Don't give away any six agains. Crossland from dummy half finds Miller fifth and last night's. 40 out from the Tigers line. They stay short side. Crossland. Back to Gagai. Gagai with the left-footed boot. It's high. Laurie's pl planted himself underneath it and takes it. And it was the, one of the most awkward-looking kicks you'll ever see. But it worked out quite well for the Knights. Laurie, dummies, finds some extra meters, but then is driven backwards in the tackle once he's caught. And the Tigers here, three tackles gone just like that. And Staines tries to get them going forward again. They're just outside their own 20. And now 30 out, fifth and last. A big kick needed here. Brooks straight down the throat of Miller. Gives it off to Young. And the Knights will be starting this set of six in a very handy position. Solid tackle, dumping Young on his back. 40 out from their own line, the Knights. And now the mistake. Neither team has that killer blow in them, I dare say. This has been very scrappy, but so exciting. And now a mistake on the play the ball. On the zero tackle. Do they get an advantage here? The Tigers, ah, oh, the coach's box can't believe it. Advantage would have been over because the play the ball got made, I suppose. Unbelievable scenes. It's just a comedy of errors here in this contest. 10 points to 6. It remains. Nobody wants to score a try in this second half. They're both doing their best to just give the opposition opportunity after opportunity, but then they just go and give it straight back. <clears throat> it's usually a case, and, and a silly penalty is that the ultimate turning point. We've been in a situation where I thought dropped balls and silly mistakes were going to be the turning point but they haven't been oh and a, t a quick tap by gamble the tigers were standing back waiting for the kick to touch and gamble has just seen 25 free meters he taps and goes the tigers were all back waiting for the kick to touch just basic stuff there and well spotted by tyson gamble Taps and goes and earns a gift 30 metres upfield. And the Knights are now tackle three. Red hot on the attack. Crossland out of dummy half. Short ball that was surely forward. Is not called. Tackle four just a metre out. Hastings to the right-hand side. Miller steps back in field. Stays alive. Gets away from the defence and is now taken on tackle five. Ten out. They must go left. They do. Hastings grubbers into the end goal. It pops up, and that is a result. It's touched from Newcastle, I dare say. Was this off Newcastle, or was this tap back off Tigers? Tap back from the Tigers. So, a result for Newcastle. They will get another set of six. Short-ish dropout. It's tapped back by the Tigers, but falls to the Knights. Young hits it up inside the Tigers 10. So much pressure has been on the Tigers. Short ball to get from Gamble. From Gamble, sorry, to Fitzgibbon. And he is just centimeters short of the line. He may have got there. The short ball from Gamble, much like much like their second try, but this time the defense holds on to Lachlan Fitzgibbon, and he is held up over the line. Great defense there from the Tigers in the end. 
But that was almost a mirror image of the first half try in the 15th minute to Lachlan Fitzgibbon. The short ball from Gamble. He spins in the tackle. This time he can't break free and score. But they're just holding on here, the Tigers. Only just. <clears throat> and the Tigers need to get their act together quick, smart. Quick, smart. No try. But the Knights now, they've created space. An overlap here. Young, the Tigers cover defense is there. Sliding across to shut that down on tackle three. Siafidi just settles things down in midfield. Ten out from the line, tackle four. Hastings stays to the left. The defense is up quickly on Gamble. They've taken him out of the attack for the kick, which means they'll have to find Hastings. Hastings is here on the short side. They stay on the left. It's kicked. It's played at. It's been kicked and played at by the Tigers, and it will be Knights' ball. The Knights are going to get the ball back here. They've already burnt their challenge. There's no captain's challenge available. <clears throat> they would have lost it anyway. <laughs> oh, Tigers. Just can't get it together, can they? Still 20 minutes to go in this game. Still such a long, long time to go. But the Tigers have to hold on. Again, Gagai off the scrum. Goes to ground. Tackle one. Thompson takes it forward. Held. Keeps his feet. He's just a meter out from the line. Lots of pressure here for the Tigers. Hastings dummies goes on his own and is swamped. Tackle three. Crossland fires it across to Gamble. Miller, they've created the overlap here. Dominic Young scores in the corner for the Knights. Easy as you like. Simple wraparound play. Cut out ball, draw and pass. Too easy. Showing how it's done there, the Newcastle Knights. My red hot tip for the wooden spoon this year. Maybe just making a statement to me and saying, hey, <laughs> you think we're going to be the wooden spooners? Get a load of these guys that we're playing. Lockie Miller with a pinpoint accurate pass. Cooper Cronk. Cooper Cronk really wants to give credit to that try to his Queensland lover boy, Gagai. But that try was created by the slick pass of Lockie Miller. Pinpoint accurate. Fourteen points to six. The kick to come from out wide. On this right-hand edge. <clears throat> yeah, St. George are definitely an option. But we'll see what Saints have got to offer when they run out next against the Gold Coast Titans. Hastings, he's right on the sideline here, not on his favoured kicking side. He moves in, strikes it, and hooks it way off to the right-hand side of the post. 14 points to six in favour of the Knights. 17 and a half minutes to go. Look at this pass. 
perfect pass out the back by Lockie Miller. Yes, coming up next, Dragons, Titans. It's the first time that we'll be seeing the Dragons in the season proper. So we'll see what they've got to offer. Sometimes the Dragons start okay, don't they? They start all right. And then they fall away mid to late season. And it just all goes to hell for them. Knights 14, Tigers 6, <clears throat> 17 minutes to go. Newcastle have got possession, tackle four inside their own half. They're just run, rumbling up the midfield at the moment here. The Knights getting through this set. They don't need to do anything silly here. They just need to get through their sets, put the ball downfield. Hastings keeps it low and flat, straight down the middle of the ground. Bounces kindly for Laurie, and Laurie... Brings it up, finding post-contact meters. A great kick return, Dane Laurie. And then he loses the ball. And it's a penalty. Oh, lucky. Oh, wow. Imagine doing all that hard work and then losing the ball. But it's a penalty to the Tigers. And Dewey thumps it into touch. 40 out from the Knights line now. Can they fire a shot, the Tigers? Every time they get within striking distance, they seem to make some sort of silly error. Coruscant shuffles it along to Dewey. Dewey to Papalihi. And it's tackle two. 30 out. Slow play the ball. <clears throat> They've changed it up a bit. Dewey slopped in, uh, slopped, slotted into first receiver, Adam Dewey. They're just changing things up here at the back end of the game, the Tigers. Trying to find something, some sort of spark. Twall hits it up the middle. Tackle four, right in front of the posts. Ten metres out. Coruscant. Oh, that's a high shot. That's a penalty. Siafidi's off. If Wade Graham has copped four weeks, Siafidi is sent from the field here, and he will be spending some time on the sideline. The precedent was set with Wade Graham last week. And this looks nasty. Saya Fidi, the New South Wales Blues forward ranks are being decimated here today. Because Saya Fidi is going to spend a certain amount of time on the sideline here. That's going to be a big suspension. And this could be a straight send-off. He's not even going to get 10. This has got to be a straight send-off. That was an absolute classic coat hanger. And he is still down and has not moved. The player that was on the receiving end of that has not moved. That is just a monstrous hit on Simkin. And I can see nothing but a straight send-off here for Siafidi. And Wade Graham got four weeks. Siafidi could be gone for six to eight. And he still hasn't moved here, Simkin. This was nasty. I'm certainly not suggesting that it was intentional in any capacity. Things happen in a game of footy, but they are stamping down on this as they need to, and that was nasty. <laughs> Wade Graham got 10 in the bin in four weeks. For a much lesser hit than that, this is going to be a straight send-off, and I think Saifidi is looking at about eight weeks on the sideline. If if the precedent is followed. I mean, they set the bar with the Wade Graham one. The bar has been set. So if it's followed, 
Simpkin sitting up at least. They've uh, they've said no to the stretcher. That's good news. He's up on his own two feet. And he's able to be helped off the field. He's walking off the field. Good to see. They brought the stretcher out. He doesn't need it. Now, here comes the big moment. 15 minutes to go. Newcastle up 14-6. There is absolutely no way in my mind. Sayafid, he's gone. He's been marched straight off. The precedent was set last week with Wade Graham. There was absolutely no way Sayafidi could stay on the field after that. That was a straight send-off. Jacob Sayafidi sent off. Unintentional, but just a monster of a hit. Welcome back, Dustin Fisher. Penalty right in front of the sticks. Ten out. They tap and go here, the Tigers. Out right to Dewey. Dewey with the inside ball to Papalihi. Tackle one. Fifteen minutes to go. Tigers inside the Knights' ten. If they're ever going to fire a shot... This is where it needs to happen. Corusau. Dewey. Passes the ball. Cut out across the face of the of the attacking line. Tumuth has tackled a meter out. Utukamanu is over the line, but he's held up and driven backwards. Tackle four, a meter out. What can they offer? Anything. Brooks steps off his right foot and falls over. Fifth and last, a waste of a tackle there. Coruscant with the worst grubber kick he's ever put in in his entire career. And the Knights survive and the Tigers just don't even fire a shot. The Tigers just don't even offer anything there. What an absolute waste of a set of six. What is going wrong with the Tigers? Just basics. The basics are letting them down. And here's Gagai breaking through one tackle, threatening to get away. And what an insult that would be if the Knights made a break, a line break upfield. Playing 12 on 13 for the rest of this contest. Fifth and last. Knights 40 out from their own line. Gamble puts the ball in over the line. They've let it bounce. This could go anywhere. Laurie attacks it. And he takes it. He holds on to it this time. Dane Laurie, great take. Far see, ahoy, mate. Nobody back for the Tigers, though. Norfoluma had nobody to pass to. Had to run it himself out of dummy half. And now Dewey trying to score a six again. Just takes it up on tackle three. The Tigers have just been unable to fire a shot on attack. It's all been very sloppy. Staines up over halfway. Gagai with that body slam into the turf again. Off a hand, Gawe, a crossfield. They've made a lot of meters a crossfield tonight, the Tigers. Fifth and last, 40 out. Dewey, that ball, that's for floating bomb, but there's no pressure on Dom Young. And Young gets away from one. Takes it up. Midfield, 10 out. From their own line. Last week, Dustin, we were talking about how good the Titans' defense seemed to be. And we really talked up the Titans' defense. But what we're learning, what we're learning so far this week is the Tigers are just abysmal. Absolutely, utterly sucky. Knights, all they need to do is hold on here. 12 minutes to go. They don't have to do anything silly. The Tigers have to make all the play of it. Fifth and last, Knights, just 30 out from their own line, but that's a good kick from Hastings. Good distance. Laurie takes it on the fall and runs it back, runs it back. Dummies outside. Nilly gets through the gap. And they start this set 10 metres short of halfway. Nobody back for the Tigers, though. 
And North Aluma is again forced to run on his own. Tim Sheens is down on the sideline and he is fired up. Timmy Sheens is fired up. Better stuff here from the Tigers. Offloading. Coruscant finds some space. Gets up, goes again, offloads. And a knock on by the Tigers. Oh, they just can't win a trick here. Just absolute nonsense from the Tigers. Coruscant did not need to throw that pass. Oh, the nightmare worsens. The nightmare worsens for the Tigers. This is horrible. Ten and a half minutes to go. Eight points the difference. Newcastle, a man down. And the Tigers still cannot fire a shot. Fourteen errors. Fourteen errors from the Tigers is nowhere near good enough at any level. The 12 man Knights. A forward pass from Lockie Miller out of dummy half. The Tigers, <laughs> this is just a comedy of errors from both teams. And it's going to be a scrum on halfway. The Tigers are gifted another opportunity. Can they take advantage of it this time? We'll find out when I get back. Sorry, apparently a tree fell down in the yard. <laughs> you know, here in Brisbane, big, big storm. Big storm. Anyway, fifth and last here. The Knights on the attack. The kick into the end goal is collected by Laurie. Laurie is just a metre outside the goal line. 14 points to six, eight and a half minutes to go. And as soon as this game is over, I need to have a look out and see where that tree is. Now they've got a chance to go wide. Cut out pass to Naden. Space. Gagai gets across and shuts it down, though. And then Dom Young over the top. And they shut that down. He needed to open up the legs there. Naden. Corusau, fifth and last. Oh, they've just got they've just got nothing to offer, do they, the Tigers? Nothing to offer. Dewey on the fifth and last. The ki those kicks are not high enough. It's allowed to bounce, but it bounces kindly for Young. And Dewey's kicks, compare Dewey's kicks to Cleary or Burton. They just don't go high enough. There's no pressure on the receiver. And the Tigers have become... In season 2023, after two weekends, the Tigers, the West Tigers, they have become my Warriors. The team that is absolutely untippable. Completely and absolutely untippable. Fifth and last here for the Knights. The kick into the corner from Hastings is taken by Laurie. Laurie tries to bring it back, but is swarmed by the defence. And the Knights with a man down. You wouldn't know that they were the team with a man down. S 
Six minutes, 40 to go. Offloaded. That's what they need. Offloads. Keep the ball alive. They didn't need to panic at all, the Tigers. But now they do. Six and a half minutes to go is panic stations. Eight points behind. Coruscant out of dummy half. Dewey, out the back they go here. Now Papalihi straightens. But somehow the Knights defense, a man down, is there. Sliding across and shutting down the play. Fifth and last. Nobody wants to do anything here. The Tigers, they're just running it through the hands. Kick in behind the line is a good one. And Miller thumps it into touch. Six minutes to go. 14-6, a result for the Tigers. <clears throat> they will get it to start this set now. 10 out, midfield. They go to the left. Brooks calling players inside, but they go outside. Naden takes on the line. Five and a half to go. Tackle one inside the 10 metres. Big open side to the right. And now Clemmer straightens it in front of the post. Tackle two. Five minutes left. Coruscant out of dummy half. Dummies goes on his own. Fires the short ball. Centimetres short. Millimetres short of the line. Now they go left again. Surely they score. No. Dominic Young taps it forward. Try saving stuff. Dominic Young. But the Tigers will get to go again. The kick, the kick through from Brooks could have bounced absolutely anywhere. Try saving by Dominic Young. The short dropout from Miller. Young gets up and the Knights come down with the ball. Newcastle ball, four minutes to go. The Titans last week, the Newcastle Knights this week. At what point do we say, is this an inspired performance by the Titans or the Knights or are the Tigers just that bad? And the Tigers are proving to be that bad. But it's been ripped away from Brooks. Fires at a cross field to Dewey. Four minutes left. Tigers have got the ball back and it's a disastrous play. The ball from Adam Dewey. And just like that, just like that, they give the ball straight back. Oh, the Tigers are absolutely abysmal. They are easily the worst team in the competition right now, the Tigers. Right at this moment, this early stage. This very early stage in proceedings. The Tigers are very, very worthy of being in last place. Two weeks in a row, I have just watched the Tigers here and shaking my head constantly at the comedy of errors that they are dishing up. Three minutes to go. A 12-man Newcastle Knights team for the back end of this game have withstood the nothing the absolute nothing that the Tigers have thrown at them, to be fair. The Tigers just have not even fired a shot. It's been very disappointing. <laughs> 14 points to six. Three minutes to go. I dare say that the Knights have got this in the bag now. I can't see any way back for the Tigers. <clears throat> Scrum down, Knights. Do they cough the ball up and give the Tigers one last glimmer of small 
Hope. Gagai from dummy half bumps off Naden, gets away from another. He's still going, Gagai, up to halfway. A huge run. Campbell tries to go on his own. Two and a half minutes left. Tackle four. Knights. Short side. Fitzgibbon. They don't have to do anything here. The Knights just get through the set. Plug the ball into touch. And that's exactly what they do. Out on the full. But <laughs> probably not what they wanted. But two minutes, ten seconds to go. The Tigers will have to go bang, bang. But I really can't see how that's going to happen. Happy Coruscant's joke about going to the Tigers to win premierships and then laughing his own ass off is proving quite accurate now. Now, Staines, they've got the overlap. But Laurie has to skip back in field. The sliding defense of the 12-man Knights team covers it off again. A minute and a half to go. They won't even have time for one try, let alone the two that they need. I just can't believe that it took them 77 minutes to do any sort of expansive play like that. Third tackle. 30 out. Now they're putting it through the hands, trying to take advantage of that extra man. And they're shut down again. Charlie Staines on tackle four. 10 out from the line. They stay on the blind side. But all the spaces on the open side. Big hit on Brooks. And Brooks might have lost the ball in the tackle there. No, he hasn't. Fifth and last. Coruscant goes open side. Short ball. And Utikamanu has lost the ball over the line. Double movement maybe even. What a what an absolute bollocks of a showing here today from the West Tigers. Seriously. <sighs> Such a horrible, horrible performance. West Tigers have gone onto my list of never to be tipped again. Who who are they playing next week? I ref, I can't tip I can't possibly tip the Tigers anymore this season. There is no plausible way I can possibly tip the Tigers ever again this season. Who are they playing next week? I'm going to put my tip in now. I'm putting my tip in early for next round. Let's go. Round three. Tigers. Tigers are playing the Bulldogs. Okay. Tip. Bulldogs. Tip. Bulldogs. The try has been awarded because they felt sorry for them. Because, <laughs> I mean, that was the very definition of a double movement. The absolute definition of a double movement. The bunkers felt sorry for them and given them a try. Fourteen, twelve, and they will have a full set of six here. The Tigers. Newcastle just have to plug this deep. Oh, what a turn up it would be if Lockie Miller, Miller puts this out on the full. Can you imagine if Lockie Miller kicks this out on the full? Now that would make a blockbuster finish. There's no threat of it going out on the full. He made sure of it. It's a ver relatively short kickoff. So the Tigers have got 20, 20 seconds to go. 80 meters upfield. 
And that's got to be a penalty, surely. Coruscant thumps it into touch. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. They're only going to have one opportunity to tap. It's got to be a two-point drop goal. Luke Brooks for the two-point drop goal. It's off to the left. It's missed. And that will be the game. 14 points to 12, Newcastle. Can you imagine a two-point field goal going over? Newcastle, my red-hot tip for the wooden spoon. I might have to rethink that after what I've seen the Tigers dish up the past couple of weeks. I dare say the Tigers will be right down there again. How far did this miss by? Brooks. Two-point drop goal attempt. Yeah, you could see it hook straight away. It hooked off to the left immediately. What a finish, though. <clears throat> that was absolutely no try at the end there, by the way. <laughs> the absolute definition. If you were to... If you were teaching kids rugby league rules and you were explaining double movements to them, you would show the replay of that try that was somehow awarded. But anyways, no damage done for Newcastle. Down a man, sent off. And the Tigers just could not fire a shot. Absolutely awful. Let's check out some of these stats. I've been told I should check out the stats. The stats apparently don't make for very pretty reading. 64% completion rate is not going to get it done. Four line breaks to two in favor of the Knights. Missed tackles will be an interesting one. And errors. 31 missed tackles, but still the Knights missed a lot of tackles too. 17 errors to 12. It was just a shambles of a game. Absolute shambles of a game. The missed tack over 30 missed tackles each. Both teams. Over 10 errors each. 17 to the Tigers, 12 to the Knights. Just an absolute comedy of a game. A bad comedy at that. It was a Dane Cook comedy, is what it was. Dreadful. Oh, the poor old Tigers. Where to from here for the Tigers? Maybe the Tigers should just stay away from Leichhardt. Maybe that's the key. Keep the Tigers out of Leichhardt. Terrible stuff. 14-12. Well done, Knights, anyway, I suppose, for what it's worth. Wasn't really well done. It was far from an impressive victory. But my goodness, the Tigers are just so, so, so bad. So bad. I mean, I can't, I honestly can't believe how bad the Tigers are. Crazy stuff. Oh, well, uh, let's get ready for the next game, huh? We are going to see, coming up next, Dragons, Titans, in about 10 minutes' time. So I'm going to... I'm going to... Uh, let's see. I'll skip off for... About five minutes, I think. Five minutes, rest the throat, <clears throat> and get ready for the next call. 14 points to 12 here. An absolute shambles of a game. But the Knights have got the win.
We'll be right back for Dragons stepping out for the first time this year against the Titans. Stick around and I'll catch you then. Absolute bloody shambles dished up by the West Tigers. Second week in a row, 
an absolute disaster of a start to the season for them. But we're getting ready now to see the St. George Dragons for the first time this season, outside of trial games, of course. And I'm starting to think, it's always risky when we do this, but I'm starting to think that maybe, just maybe, the Titans weren't as good as they were made to look last week. Maybe it's just the Tigers are absolutely terrible. So it could possibly be the Dragons that will get the start, uh, the the victory to start with here. Uh, So I'm leaning towards perhaps doing a sneaky change of my tip leading into this one. Titans, Dragons... We don't really know what the dragons are going to fire up, do we? So anyways, I've got about four minutes to decide. Roughly. Four minutes to decide what I'm going to do. But I am seriously considering, based on what we just saw, maybe, 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 maybe the Titans are not as switched on as they appeared last week. Because by... God, this is really clearly a very, very terrible, dreadful West Tigers team. So it will be very, it'll be interesting to see what what we do. What do we do? So Tigers, their first showing this season uh, was was less than impressive. Second week, I think, was even worse. Well, it was definitely worse. Losing losing to the Knights is far worse than a loss to the uh, Titans, I dare say. Especially since I think, and I still think, the Knights may be red-hot specials for the Wooden Spoon. At least that's what I was thinking before. Tigers are making a bit of a mockery out of that, though, aren't they? So, St. George Dragons. Gold Coast Titans. Coming up in a couple of minutes. Who's going to get the win? First time we're seeing them run out, of course. They had the bye in week one. So this is the first time that we'll be seeing them. Uh, Dustin Fisher, I don't have the ability to bet on try scorers, so I'm stuck with just betting on the game and the score line. So they don't have the try scorer market available over there, eh? That's unfair. I don't know about try scorers for this one. I haven't really followed along with either team. Maybe I'll go Big David for feeder. That could be one. Big Dave for feeder. Anytime try scorer. I might have to seriously consider that. Who else? David Fafita for the Dragons. Zach Lomax, maybe. Oh, Revelawa. Of course, big Revelawa. All right. I know what I'm going to do. I've got it sorted out. Okay. The teams are running out onto the field here, so let's get ready. Okay, I've got to get this bet. I've got to get this bet slammed on fast. Let's go. Let's go. We need a win, is what we need. We need a win, quick smart. We got so close in week one with the the same game multi. We haven't really been close ever since, though, to be totally fair. Let's go, let's go. Quick, 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 quick. The teams are out. The Titans are out. We've got a minute to go. Same game multi. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Bet, 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 bet. Quick deposit, quick deposit, quick deposit. Ah, oh, this is not this is not working out for me. Come on. I've got to make a quick deposit as well. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Slow down, take your time, getting out there. Ben Hunt, slow things down, mate. Do what you do when you do what you do when you're playing for Queensland, mate. Just slow it all down. Take your time. Yes! All right, I got the bet on. So let's see how my multi goes. Ravalawa. Ravalawa, Lomax, Sammy, and AJ Brinson. And I've decided to stick with the Titans. Why not? I'm sticking with the Titans to win. Teams around on the field. We are ready to get underway here. Round two, the final game of the round. St. George Illawarra Dragons, their first game of the season against the Titans, who got the victory last week. But time will tell whether they were actually as impressive defensively as they looked or if it was just the complete and total suckiness of the West Tigers. We're about to find out. The Dragons, very enthusiastic start defensively. Three big tackles, four big tackles in a row, keeping the Titans pinned down inside their own 20-meter line. Tino brings it up fifth and last. Titans, 30 out from their own line. Huge first set of six to start the season for the Dragons. The kick downfield is taken on the fall by Sloan, and the Dragons on the back of a very aggressive first set of six defensively. And now the Titans, they get to show their wares. A four-man tackle drives Sloan backwards. Ravalawa with the hit up. Just feeling each other out now. One man out. There is one big solid unit. Who is that? Blake Laurie. What a beast of a human being. A tank. But the Dragons, on the back of that first set of six defensively, find themselves inside Titans territory. Fifth and last. 30 out. The kick to the corner from Sullivan hangs up in the breeze, but it's taken by Brimson. And the Titans, no real pressure on that. They come away with the ball. And now a high shot gives the Titans a relieving penalty. And they can get out of their own end. For the first time in the first two minutes. But the, the defense from both teams, very, very solid to start this contest. The kick to touch with the breeze at their back, the Titans, is over halfway. And Tino... Big Tino takes the first hit up on the back of that penalty. Ed Vogel says, surely the Titans win this one. Well, time will tell. I'm starting to wonder, based on what we just witnessed from the Tigers, though, if the Titans were really as impressive as they seemed last week or if it's just the general crappiness of the Tigers. <clears throat> but a lot of people predicting Wooden Spoon or thereabouts Fafita breaks away from one, busts through a second one, keeps his feet. And he's taken down eventually 20 out from the Dragons line. Fourth tackle. They're running it here. The Titans out to the right, breaking through tackles. The defense of the Dragons here on their own line looking very, very shaky at best. Fifth and last big open side to the left. The high ball across for the winger. Ravalawa gets up. It falls. It falls for Pereira. Who's it come off? It's going up as no try. Was it knocked forward by the Titans or back off Ramalawa? Let's have a look. It's fallen nicely for Khan Pereira. There's not a lot of enthusiasm or celebrating going on from the Titans.
Hmm, we need another camera angle to see who this has come off. It might have come off Philip Sami. That camera angle's not going to show us anything. Yes, that's off Sammy. That's that's hit that's hit Philip Sami's arm. That will be no try. No try. Off forward off the arm of Sami and the Dragons. Such a solid defense down the other end, but such flaky defense inside their own 20, and they dodge a bullet there to start this game. Solid enough stuff to start from the Titans, though. And the Dragons, they get away with that. Now they're rumbling upfield. Three tackles, almost up to the 40-meter line, keeping it in midfield. Jack Bird with the hit up towards the halfway and beyond. He, sh he swings around and gets beyond the halfway line from dummy half and by another cast off from the Tigers. Fifth and last Hunt with the high ball pressure on the kick receipt. He's made a complete cack of it. And this is a big result for the Dragons. James Intox asks, do you think the Tartans have a chance of making the top eight this year? Absolutely not a chance. <laughs> not a chance in hell. Result for the Dragons. They are going to get a full set of six here. Starting 20 out from the line. Laurie just goes forward. The only way he knows how. Playing out to the left, keeping his feet. Murdoch Masilla draws in five defenders. It takes five men to put him down. And a set repeat. Titans under pressure here early. Jack Bird across field. Shrugs away from one and a short ball is coughed up by Jaden Sewer. And the Dragons, when all looked promising, it went to hell in a handbasket, just like that. And this Sunday ticket, NRL Sunday ticket, Tigers, Knights, Dragons, Titans, the standard of football has been a very dramatic step down from what we saw earlier in the round. Scrum down for the Titans, though, bringing it away from their own end. Oh, and he's all twisted up awkwardly in the tackle here. He's fallen very, very awkwardly. Jojo Fafita. Bringing it out for the Titans, it was, and he got himself all twisted up. And that is not any, any way that a normal human being should be bent and twisted. He's lost the ball in the process of that. So what happens here? Do we have a sympathy rule? <laughs> Is there a sympathy rule that suggests, no, it's a knock-on. There's no sympathy rule in the NRL. Well, the sympathy rule is in effect. The Titans get to keep the ball. And now Tino, maybe in an act of justice, Tino has lost the ball in the tackle, and the Dragons come away with it anyway. The very next play, the ball. A little bit of justice there, I think. I mean, you do hate to see errors made in the act of, uh, of a player potentially being hurt, but it was clearly a knock-on. The Dragons did deserve the ball, 
and they ended up with it. And now, to make matters worse for the Titans, a penalty right in front of the sticks, and surely, surely you take the two right in front of the posts. Absolutely you take the two. Good call, Zach Lomax, or whoever the captain is for the Dragons. Take the two, get yourself on the board. An absolute gift. Gift two points here for the Dragons. And they are about to go two points to nil ahead. Seven and a half minutes in. I think we've got a close contest on our hands here, I'm pretty sure. This will be a very close game. I had a tough time deciding who to pick. I went with the Titans based on how well I thought they defended last week. But then when we saw the utter dross that was tossed up by the Tigers in the game prior to this one, maybe it wasn't so much a case of the uh, Titans being that good. Maybe it was just the... Maybe it was just the Tigers being that bad. But anyway, a penalty goal right in front. An absolute gift two-pointer. And it's the Dragons up early here. Two points to nil. And I'm very impressed that they took the two. Back underway, Laurie with the hit up. I would have thought Ravalawa would take that on his own. Hands it off to Laurie, though, and now Ravalawa gets his go. Firing up the big man. Big run from Sua. Bumps off one of the Titans defenders, and they have got front football. A lot of momentum here. The Dragons carrying it up into Titans territory. Keeping the ball alive now with offloads. Out to the left. Bird with the short ball. Finding space is Molo. And it's the fifth and last midfield. They go to the left. Ben Ben Hunt passes the cutout ball. A forward pass, surely. And it is called. But Fine. Fine was close. He was he'd skipped away from the defense. But it had to be a forward pass. Well, both of them were probably forward. I think Zach Lomax is the one who's been pinged for the forward pass. But you could have had any number of passes in that play. The one from Ben Hunt looked a bit suspect. Relieving penalty here to the Titans. And they can get themselves out of their own territory. Because they were bang under pressure here. Inside the 10 metres, a great kick. Oh, it's tapped back in field by the Dragons. They've missed touch, the Titans. And then the Dragons have knocked the ball on. We have got another game with a comedy of errors happening here penalty to the titans they tried to chew off a few too many meters with the kick into touch it was tapped back in field by the dragons so titans mistake by missing touch dragons carrying it back losing the ball gifting possession straight back to the titans so it's almost like they got the penalty kick into touch in a regulation zone anyway. Titans ball for and floats it over the top. A horrendous pass to Pereira. He's managed to hold onto it and stay in the field of play, but Kieran Foran, he might not want to do that again. Six again for inside 10. And this will be the first tackle. Dragons. They've been taking notes from the Tigers in the previous game. Both teams have been taking notes from the Tigers-Knights game because this has been another scrappy start. Foran bobbles the ball, manages to hold onto it. Fafita on the inside line finds some space behind the defense. 
And he has tackled 20 out from the line. To the left of the posts, they go back to the open side, the Titans. And they're taken down, 10 out from the line. Fourth tackle. Options to the left and right. They go left, four and out the back to Brimson. Brimson, nowhere to go. Shut down. Actually, he does find somewhere to go. He gets away. Fires the ball out to the left to Pereira, who scores in the corner. Very, very scary signs defensively for the Dragons because Brimson was covered off there. Had nowhere to go, but he somehow... Somehow, he slips under the tackle here. Literally under the tackle. Passes it out to Pereira on the left-hand edge. Plants it down for the first try of the game. Vobsy, ahoy, mate. Just in time for a Titans try. Khan Pereira in the corner for the first try. Four points to two. Kick to come from out wide. First NRL try. Well done, young fella. Tanner Boyd from out wide, right on the sideline. It's his favorite side, at least. His favorite edge. Can he hook this around and get another two points for the Titans? It started off well. It's hooking back. It hooks back straight down the middle. Titans six, Dragons two. And some very worrying signs defensively from the Dragons. They started very solidly, and they've been defending well down the other end of the field. But every time, every time that it's been within their own 20-meter line, their defense seems to fall to pieces. Dragons get us back underway. <clears throat> and it's Tino with the first hit up. And here we see it again. Solid defense down this end of the field by the Dragons. Big hit on David Fafita. No territory at all being made here by the Titans. Solid defense down this end of the field. It's up the other end. Offloaded. Titans keep it alive. Four and tries to get away but is dragged down on tackle three. But they're still trapped deep in their own territory here, the Titans. Outside their 20-meter line now, up over the 30 with a good run. Straight up the middle. Heads down, bums up. Now Bribson using his speed to find some extra meters. Fifth and last, Titans just shy of the halfway line. Tanner Boyd puts the ball high. No pressure on Tyrrell Sloan, and he takes it comfortably. And is driven backwards in a four-man tackle. Titans finding that extra little bit of enthusiasm on defense. If they can force another error here, they know that the Dragons' defense is falling to pieces when they're down this end of the field. I really wonder what the difference is in their defensive structure this end of the field versus up the other end, where they've been really, really solid keeping the Titans in their own territory but they've fallen to pieces when defending their own line. Sullivan steps off the right foot, tries to find a way through. Nothing doing. Fifth and last, Dragons. Hunt runs it. Dummies inside, kicks it through on, on the ground. It's taken by Brimson. He's away from one, almost away from two, and then is pulled over the sideline. But surely that's a penalty, and it is. Surely the tackle had been completed and was... Well, offsides, I think the penalty was for, as it transpires. Yep, 
Yeah, dragging the tackle player. Yes, absolutely. Penalty to the Titans, and we know what happened last time. <laughs> hey, Lara. Hello, you. <laughs> Titans tackle three on the attack here. They're inside the 34 and out the back. Brimson. Brimson has looked very threatening every time he touches the ball. Boren inside to Tino. Fifth and last Titans. 20 out. They go the short side. Foran kicks in field for Brimson. Brimson doesn't quite win the race. It was on, though, the cheeky inside ball. The kick in field from Foran. Looking for AJ Brimson flying through on the inside. <laughs> Laurie has tried to knock the ball over the dead ball line. He's completely missed it and ended up falling on it. And it's a good thing he landed on it. 6-2 Titans. They go deep with the dropout. And Tanner Boyd takes it on the full. Hands it off to one of his forwards for a hit up. Aaron Clark, I think that is. It is indeed Aaron Clark. Tino offloads. Out to four and Fafita dummies left goes on his own and a great tackle there, taking down a much much bigger man, Jaden Sullivan. And that's six again, six again for the Titans. Pressure on here. This goal line defense of the Dragons needs to step up. Sees a gap out of dummy half. Sam Verrells saw the markers not square. Darts out and scores the try on his own. Sam Verrills puts the Titans up. 10 points to two. Kick to come. Titans well on top here. And if Verrills doesn't score the try, then surely Jack Bird goes to the sin bin for a blatant offside. But Verrills does get the try. Titans 10-2, kick to come. They are well on top here. And the Dragons' first showing of the season proper. Because remember, they had a bye last week. This is their first proper game of the season. And it must be very, very worrying signs indeed. For Dragon supporters... Some very, very concerning sights that we are seeing to start off with. Still, there's a long way to go. We're very early in this contest. But it's about to be 12 points to two. Surely Tanner Boyd does not miss from here. Right beside the posts, just to the left, puts it right up the middle. 12 points to two. 20 minutes gone, 12 2 Titans. Well on top. Sam Verrills over from the Roosters, looking for game time, I suspect. Knowing that the cheese was on his way to the Roosters, he needed somewhere to go for guaranteed game time. And he is proving a big difference maker in this Titans attack. Dragons get us back underway. The kick is deep into the end goal. We've seen a lot of kicks over the dead ball line on the full. To start the season, that was a worrying sign, surely, as it was floating further and further towards the end goal. 
And once again, we're seeing a very solid start to the defensive set for the Dragons. Down this end of the field, they're absolutely fine. Their defensive patterns and their structure, when they're down this end of the field, look solid as all hell. It's once they get up the other end and they're defending their own line that it all falls to pieces for them. Another big set of six keeping the Titans pinned down here. They pretty much the game plan for the Dragons. They just they just need to not give away silly penalties and piggyback the Titans upfield. They've stood and watched it. They've let it bounce. Dangerous stuff there, Sloan. It falls kindly for him. How dangerous is it to stand and watch the ball bounce? A high ball can bounce absolutely anywhere. They get away with it, though, the Dragons. But that was an absolute disaster. They're trying their best to make it hard on themselves here, St. George. Oh, flipping the player up off his feet, doing a... <laughs> it was almost like a WWE suplex off the ground there. Back drop, back body drop. Fifth and last, Dragons, the kick is in behind the defense. It bounces kindly, though, for Pereira, who can bring it back. And Sloan takes him down on tackle one. And the Titans starting this set from their own 20. Not a bad position, considering where they're usually starting the sets from. But they are well on top here on the scoreboard. Well on top. With the momentum here, the Titans. Good run on the third, up towards halfway. Now they're into Dragons territory once more on tackle four. Staying in midfield. Verrills finds some space out of dummy half again. Another good run. Fifth and last. They're 30 out midfield. They go to the right-hand side. Boyd puts the ball high into the corner. Pressure on the kick chase. Oh, it is taken very, very well by Fangai. And also winning a penalty for inside the 10. Just what the doctor ordered for the Dragons. Boy, did they need that. Because the Titans have been well on top to start this contest. That's a shocker of a kick to touch. Shanks it. And he's only found five meters. Well, that was a pointless... I mean, they may as well have just tapped and run. Horrible kick to touch. And as a result of that, they're starting this set well with offloads. Oh, dangerous stuff here. A lifting tackle from the Titans. Lifting tackle. Jacob Little. It's all right. It looked a lot worse in real time than it actually is. But whenever you lift a player in the tackle, you are putting fate into the hands of the officials. Salad days. Ahoy there, mate. Oh, we, we've seen some pretty big kicks to touch in the previous game. Obviously, the kickers in rugby league are not as uh, as solid as in rugby union. And I say that as a fan of both sports. I love both codes. But let's face it, much bigger kickers in rugby union. Uh, but, I mean, this was particularly bad. It literally only went five meters. I mean, you expect at least 10. <laughs> you expect at least 10 meters. And even 10 meters, I would consider a bad kick to touch. But this was literally straight across the field, made all of five meters. It was particularly bad. Welcome along anyway, Salad Days, to the Wasted World of Sports. As the Dragons are now fourth tackle, five out from the line. They stay blindside, Hunt with the cutout ball. And all Fangai had to do was hold it, and he scores in the corner. But the pass is just over his head. And he can't reel it in. And it's into touch. The Titans survive. Not the greatest of passes by Ben Hunt. 
but perhaps should have been taken. And he knows it wasn't a great pass either. Ben Honey's shaking his head there. That was an opportunity wasted for the Dragons. And the Titans with an opportunity now to get themselves out of their own half once more. They've looked threatening every time they get down the other end, the Titans. Definitely on top, well and truly, at the moment. But it's been far from convincing by either team. Well, certainly not the Dragons. <laughs> Definitely not convincing by them. Spotawako with the hit up now. Titans on tackle four. Still inside their own half. We look for Tanner Boyd. He's out to the right. He puts a high looping bomb up. Taken by Sloan as he falls to his knees. He's up but he's hammered in the chase. And the Dragons must start from their own 10-meter line again. They've got a long way to go upfield to get back into the position they were. That was a real opportunity, that last set of six for them. Lomax, there's some space for Murdoch. Masilla bumps off one. They're still going, the Dragons. Tackle three, 35 out on that left-hand edge. Huge line up to the right, but Hunt kicks it across field. What was he thinking, Ben Hunt? The kick was not the right option there on the third tackle, and Pereira takes it for the Titans. And now Ravalawa with a high shot, and it's a penalty to the Titans, and the Dragons have just capitulated there. They had all the front foot momentum. Murdoch Masilla just bulldozes over the defense there creates the space, and Ben Hunt, for some reason, decided a crossfield kick on tackle three was the option. And he would probably want that moment over again. The kick into touch, and it found 15 metres. They're excited, the Titans. 15 metres, the kick into touch. Slow play the ball. But they're up over halfway, early in the tackle count. Boy, would it be a big blow if the Titans get a result or points at the end of this set of six. They're on the way. Tackle three, 30 out to the right-hand side. Boy, dummies, steps back in field. And he is cut down. 35 out from the line, midfield, tackle four. They come back to the left now, the Titans. Foran, dummies out wide, steps inside himself. And he's brought down. Ten out from the line, fifth and last. They go short side, cut out ball to Pereira. Kicks it into Ravalawa, who can't control it, but it will be knocked on by the Titans eventually. Not a great end to the set there from the Titans. But Dragons starting a set 10 metres out from their own line again. The Titans are just controlling field position here. They're controlling the flow of this game in every facet. Dragons not helping themselves out. Some interesting decision-making. And just lacking the finesse. But let's not forget, this is the Dragons' first game of the season. They had the bye in round one. Forget about trial games. Trial games don't matter at all. This is their first proper game, the Dragons. After the bye last week. And they are looking very understandably sloppy. Fifth and last, and they decide to run it. Cut out ball to Ravalawa. Kicks it in field and four, and is there to collect any potential threat. And the Titans will start this set 30 out. A good result for them. A very sloppy start to this game for the Dragons. Oh, God, have we lost the scoreboard again? 
There we go. 12 points to two it is. 30 minutes gone. Titans well on top here. And you just get the feeling another try of points of some description for the Titans as they go out to the right-hand edge. And it's, uh, it's Fafita, Jojo Fafita, caught on the fifth and last. Boyd. The kick chase is good. The pressure is on. Sully, but Sully takes it. But again, here are the Dragons starting a set of six, ten out from their own line. Ravalala has um, has team color themed underwear. I, I can't help but notice. Dragons doing it the hard way at the moment. That's better. Sloan from dummy half breaks straight through. He's got support inside, and this will be a try for Jacob Little. And out of absolutely nowhere, dead set nowhere, Sloan from dummy half busts the tackle way too easily, and he's in under the posts. Jacob Little, some very poor defense there. Lazy work from David Fafita getting back into the defensive line, and Isaac Liu with a lazy arm out just grabbing at the player rather than trying to make a hit. And they just switched off momentarily there, but that's all it took. Dragons are back. The Dragons are back. 12-6 kick to come from right in front of the posts. Ben Hunt taking his time here. That's such an easy kick. Oh, it was Lomax kicking. Conversion successful. 12-8. Dragons back in this. Lazy defense from the Titans. Inviting them back into the contest. But that's good, though. I'm hoping for a lot of tries. I need a lot of tries for my multi. My same game multi is looking pretty, pretty dismal right about now, it must be said. <laughs> Titans get us back underway. Oh, it is, it's so ridiculously humid here in, in Brisbane today. Southeast Queensland as a whole. So, so humid. Thank Christ for air conditioning. Dragons. They've got some enthusiasm. Oh, they've ripped it away illegally here. The Titans. An absolute gift to the Dragons. Oh, the Titans are self-destructing here in the past few minutes. Six minutes to go until half time. An illegal steal, and the Dragons suddenly 12 points to 8 and starting a set 25 out from the Titans line. Setting it up in midfield. 20 out. Tackle 2. They go to the left. Hunt takes it to the line. Gets a short ball off to Musgrave. They come back to the right-hand side now. Sullivan, dummies inside. He links up this time with Suli. A-F-B-O-C-C. -C. How am I going to say that? A-F-B-O-C. A-F-B-O-C. It's pouring rain in California. 
Lomax falls over his own feet out on the left-hand edge. Fifth and last. Tackled right on the sideline. Decoy runner. Hunt puts the ball across field right in front of the post. Oh, but Foran takes it nicely. He's in. Pr he's under pressure. He's driven back over the line. And this will be a result for the Dragons. A dropout. It's going to be. Dragons will get the ball back. And the momentum of this game has just swung ridiculously in favor of the Dragons. Short dropout. Well, shortish. It finds the grass. It bounces kindly for Ravalawa, though. And he gets away from one. He gets away from two. Ravalawa still going. He's clipped around the back of the air. And he's still standing. Tackle one inside the 10-meter line. Pressure on the Titans here. But they've brought this on themselves, the Titans. Absolutely brought this all on themselves. They invited the Dragons back into this contest. Out to the left they go. Hunt. To Lomax. Back to Hunt on the wraparound. Goes on his own. Ben Hunt scores the try. Ben Hunt playing as if it's state of origin in that set piece. You know, because he sucks in every other game except for origin is what I mean. And there he is. Ben Hunt, a simple wraparound play has created the space. And that is as easy as you like. And I was wondering, I have been wondering all half, were the Titans really as good as they seemed last week? defensively or was it just that the Tigers are so crap and we saw what the Tigers dished up in the game prior to this one and maybe just maybe it is a case of they were made to look a lot better than they actually were but regardless I think what we're seeing Tigers versus Knights Dragons versus Titans I think we are seeing a battle of the bottom four playing out in front of us. These will be the teams competing for the spoon, I dare say. So very crucial games in the context of the season. Even though it's only round two, it's still early and anything can happen. Critical games in the final wash-up of things, I dare say. All these teams playing each other, trying to get the early points. Lomax to the left-hand side of the post. Keeps it flat again, and this time off to the left. And we remain all squared up here. 12 points all. Heading into the halftime break. <clears throat> and my same game multi, zero. <laughs> Not a single leg ticked off. All day, all bloody day, not a single leg ticked off. Come to think of it, I got zero, zero from three in the last game. All three legs failed. And I've got zero legs so far in this one. I'm going great. Titans get us back underway. Two minutes to go till the break. It's a deep kickoff. Ravalawa. He'll just put his head down, bum up, and run at the line. Big run, Ravalawa. Oh, what a massive tackle. Massive tackle. Couchman running it up, and he has just run into a brick wall named Fodawaka. And Stimson, a two-man bulldozing tackle that has rocked him backwards. And he did well to hold on to the ball there. And not only that, he's back again, taking another hit up. Fifth and last now, Dragons back in Titans territory. A minute and ten to go. 40 out from the Titans line. Hunt goes high. Pressure on the kick chase. They've let it bounce again, the Titans. 
And, oh, clipped across the back of the head is Pereira. They've got less than a minute to go. But the Dragons will get last say in this first half. Drop goal. What are the chances of a drop goal? They've got 30 seconds. Five out from the line. Dragons just to the right edge of the post. And they go right. Dummies inside. Goes inside this time to Sua. And Sua's tackled. Just a meter out from the line. They stay blindside. Here's Ravalawa for the corner. Ravalawa scores. Ravalawa scores in the corner for the Dragons. And the Titans in the past 15 minutes have done everything in their power to just shoot themselves in the foot here. Ravalawa scores. And I'm going into halftime at least with one leg of my multi ticked off. So looking on the bright side. And the past 15 minutes, the Titans have just absolutely gone off the boil and invited the Dragons not just back into the contest, but they've invited them in front. 16 points to 12. Kick to come from out wide. Ravalawa, the try scoring machine, scores another. Those Dolphins, hey... I'll tell you what, I'm pleased to, to say I was saying in every stream in the lead up to the Dolphins' first game, never, ever underestimate a Wayne Bennett coached team. The Dolphins are not going to be anywhere near as bad as people are anticipating. Never underestimate a Wayne Bennett coached team. And boy, have they come out and made a couple of big statements to start their NRL journey. <clears throat> Lomax from the sideline hooks it back and it just falls short of the post. It was on line. It was right on target with the black dot, but it drops under the crossbar. But the Dragons, they did just enough to go into halftime 16-12 ahead. And the Titans, they did everything possible to throw the lead away, and they succeeded. So they'll get an absolute bollocking at halftime, I dare say. They will get an absolute pounding in the sheds at the break because they really let things slip quite badly. But I think we're seeing the bottom four. I really do. I honestly think we are seeing the bottom four teams in action today. The Tigers were abysmal for the second week in a row. The Knights really weren't any better. They were terrible. They were just slightly less sucky. And they got away with the win, the Knights. They were slightly less sucky than the opposition. And uh, here, the Dragons and the Titans have been quite miserable as well, both of them. So... Half time here, 16 points to 12. West of Water Sports will be back for the second half. Stick around. We'll be back in a few minutes for the second half. Catch you there.
wasted world of sports. <laughs> Second half coming up. We've had... <laughs> it's interesting because these games have been far from... Far from quality. The skill level of both teams in both games has been far from comprehensive. But they've been enjoyable games, haven't they? Sometimes some of the best games of footy, not necessarily in terms of skill level, but in terms of excitement and going down to the wire and whatnot, sometimes it takes the worst teams in the competition to have some of those contests. But it's good to see close games. We haven't really seen that many blowouts to start the season. But I would have to say, early on, uh, Tigers are quite clearly next level bad. The Tigers are very, very deserving of being on the bottom of the table. Zenpai, ahoy there. Broncos or Dragons next weekend? Uh, well, from what I've seen so far, the Broncos should win quite comprehensively, quite comfortably. Is it at Suncorp next week? Sometimes you just never know with the Broncos, though, hey? Uh, it, it is at Suncorp. Okay, cool. Yep, it is at Suncorp. Uh, the Dragons really haven't fired anything to suggest that there'll be any threat at Suncorp Stadium. But you just never know, do you? The Broncos, they've had two pretty solid games to start the season, but we've seen that before, haven't we? Uh, the Bulldogs lost to the Sea Eagles 66-0 in 2021. Bulldogs got up over the storm, though. How about that? How about that? The Bulldogs, against all odds, getting up over the Melbourne Storm. I can only imagine. Craig Bellamy probably still hasn't slept. I can only imagine. Craig Bellamy is probably still yet to sleep after that game. Uh, so what else have we got coming up in round three? Round three... Looking forward to Thursday night, Manly Sea Eagles versus the Parramatta Eels. That will probably be a good contest. Sea Eagles looking good. Parramatta, not so much. But I don't expect Parramatta to be bad for long. I anticipate the Eels to bounce back at some point. It could very well be against the Sea Eagles there. Uh, then Friday, Knights and Dolphins. Dolphins, top of the table. As much as I expected the Dolphins to do better than people thought they would, I certainly wasn't anticipating having them on top of the table. Certainly wasn't anticipating that. And then the big match on Friday night, the 17th of March, Roosters, Rabbitohs. Looking forward to that one as well. TJ says, would you rather watch a game in Canberra at night on the cold night or watch a game in Townsville on a hot day? Well, considering my hatred of both the Raiders and the Cowboys, uh, <laughs> this is a very hard choice. But then you're asking me about the conditions, I suppose, not the teams involved. Um, me, personally... Probably have to go for the cold in Canberra. But again, you're asking me about watching it. If I were playing, I would rather play in the cold. But you're asking me about watching. So, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't suppose it really matters. Townsville's got a very impressive stadium. And if it's in Townsville, it means it would be not in Canberra, therefore we don't have to see the Viking clap. KO's crapped out again, hasn't it? 
Yes, it has. I'm th- I'm standing here thinking it is taking an eternity for the second half to start, and that's because KO has gone and pooped itself again. You know, people have been screaming at KO on Facebook to sort this out. They have been getting so many comments that surely they can't honestly think that uh, the issue is not with them. South Sydney Rabbitohs fan says, Go Dragons! Wow, there you go. Nice to know that the Rabbitohs fans are going for the Dragons here today. 16 points to 12 it is at halftime. Teams are getting ready to come back out. It's been a sloppy old game. Titans started very well. But they did their best to throw away the lead, and they succeeded. Dragons going into halftime with the lead. Vobsy says, I'm so excited for Roosters versus Rabbits. That's going to be a cracker of a game. I'm leaning towards the Roosters. I said it last week, the Rabbitohs were made to look very good against the Sharks, but the Sharks were were just dire in that first week. <sighs> we got a better look at where the Rabbitohs are really at against the Panthers. And I still think the Roosters, they're not far away. They're not far away from a complete performance. And maybe, just maybe it happens on Friday night. Uh, TJ asks, which team do you hate the most in the NRL? It's a very close call between the Raiders and the Cowboys. It used to be Parramatta, but then last year the Cowboys did all those soccer dives and really, really got me on the wrong side of them. And the Raiders, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything against the Raiders other than the Viking clap. I hate the Viking clap. You know, if the supporters didn't do that stupid Viking clap, I probably wouldn't care about the Raiders one way or the other. Will, ahoy there, mate. My tips are <laughs> atrocious this weekend. I need the Dragons to win. Well, my tips have been atrocious all season so far, so I need the Titans to win. This was a very tough game to pick, though, because we don't know, we don't know about the Dragons. This is their first game, so the Dragons were really an unknown commodity coming into this one. It was a very tough game to pick. How do you pick a game where you haven't really seen anything from the other team yet? Obviously, there were the trial games. Oh yeah, Mick Innes mocking it back in 2016 was priceless. 2016 was a great year. <laughs> Come on, second half. 16-12 here, still anybody's game. Dragons just slightly ahead. <clears throat> oh, I didn't look at the stats. I should look at some stats. Uh, with an odd number of teams, at least one team will have a bite each week. Yes, I think it's a bloody shambles, personally. <sighs> That's what I think. It was a difficult scenario to be in, I'm sure, but I would have thought that they had pre-planned the expansion from so long ago, and they just put so much thought and so much planning into it. Surely you plan to bring two teams in at the same time. 
Uh, Zampire says the problem is that the Eels for the next four games will play a team coming off a bye. Yes, we were discussing that uh, uh, a couple of streams back about how there is such discrepancy in the draw. Cowboys, for example. Sorry, Dustin, but the Cowboys have got the easiest draw. The Cowboys have been gifted such an easy draw. And then you look at you look at other scenarios. The eels have got quite a difficult draw. Shark, my sharks have got a difficult draw as well. But that's all right because the sharks had the second easiest draw last year. So I'm happy to see them go through a little bit more uh, of a of a tougher run this season. Because we yeah. <laughs> They did have it pretty easy last year as well. Not as easy as the Cowboys. But they still had it pretty pretty soft. So I'm happy I'm happy enough to see the Sharks have a tougher run this season. Uh Will says the Broncos are at home for five in a row, aren't they? Probably. I feel like the Broncos are always at home. TV, it's the TV deal and all, supposedly. The Broncos get a lot of Friday night games at home at Suncorp because apparently that pulls in the TV audience. Anyway, teams are back out for the second half here. 16-12, the Dragons ever so slightly ahead at the break. I can only imagine the right bollocking that the Titans got at half time for throwing that game away, that half. They were well on top, the Titans, 12-2. 12 points to two, the Titans were up. <clears throat> and in the last 15 minutes of the half, they just threw it all away. Back underway here. Dragons will get first use of the ball. And can they keep up the pressure and the momentum that they went into the break with and build on this slight advantage that they've got? No, they can't. Dropping the ball cold. One out from the ruck is Jaden Sewer. No pressure at all. Just drops the ball stone cold. And here is an opportunity early for the Titans. Anthony Griffin has a swig of his Coke, no sugar, in disgust at what he's just witnessed. I don't think that sounds crazy at all, Zempai. As soon as Ponga went down, as soon as I saw it was Ponga, I mean, look at what happened to uh, Boyd. Look what happened with Boyd Cordner. I don't think it's crazy at all to suggest that maybe he needs to step away for a little bit. Titans off the scrum. 30 out from the Dragons line. Can they make a hit back straight away in the second half? Foreign to Bo uh, out the left to Brimson. Cut out pass to Pereira looking for his second. He gets it down, but does he get it down in time? It's been called out. We're not even going to have a look at it. It would have been a miracle of a try from Pereira had he scored it, but no, he's clearly put his foot on the line. Otherwise, it was all good. Danger signs there early in the second half for the Dragons. The Titans are not out of this just yet. Hunt runs it to the line. Dummies goes on his own. Is swamped by the Titans' defense. <clears throat> Tackle three. Dragons doing the hard yards, bringing it out of their own end. Fourth up to the 40. Scampering out of dummy half and then gets the offload away. 
And a good run there for the Dragons. Up into Titans territory. Fifth and last. Kicks it in behind the line to the corner. And it finds touch. And a solid set of six. And a good finish to it there from the Dragons. Just a little settler there from Jaden Sullivan. They can go reset the defensive line. And the Titans have to bring it out. Do the hard yards now. Starting 10 out. Much like the Dragons did in the first half, constantly bringing the ball off their own line. And that's a gift for the Titans. Up way too quick there, the Dragons. Inside 10, penalty. Titans. Can they chew, can they chew off more than five metres in the kick to touch? Yes, they can. 20 metre gain up to halfway. Oh, he doesn't find touch. It just hangs in the breeze, and they fail to find touch. What a disaster for the Titans. Instead of the halfway tap, a full set of six in Dragons territory. Dragons have the ball on tackle three, 40 out from the Titans line. Horrible result. Second time tonight that they failed to find touch. Off a penalty. And it is the Dragons now who will get an opportunity. Potentially a set restart there. And it is. They've got a full set of six now. An infringement in the ruck. And the Dragons on this left-hand edge, 10 metres out. A full set of six to go. They can just set things up now. Midfield, options to the left, options to the right. Hunts over on the right. They go wide to Sullivan. Dummies and steps back in field and just settles the play down for tackle three. They're lined up out to the left here, the Dragons. Offloaded, keeping the ball alive. It's on out to the left. Hunt, dummies, find Sloan on the short ball. In behind the defense, he goes and cruises over. And that's a huge moment in this game. Terrell Sloan gets a try. The Dragons go up 20 points to 12. The Titans have just capitulated. I was this close to changing my tip right before kickoff after I saw how bad the Tigers are. I was so close to switching. We've still got plenty of time left in this one, but it's not looking good for the Titans at all. They are falling to pieces here. Twenty points to twelve kick to come. <clears throat> Titans are just shooting themselves in the foot repeatedly. Twelve points to two it was, remember, quite early in the contest. And since then all dragons. From twelve points to two, it's become twenty points to twelve kick to come. Zach Lomax to the left of the posts. About twenty meters to the left of the posts. Starts it off wide to the right. It curls back around straight up the middle. 22 points to 12. Dragons up by 10. They were down by 10 early. They're up by 10 now. What a turnaround. Titans just been... They've created this themselves, the Titans. Boy, would I not want to be a Titans fan right about now. They have completely ballsed this up. Getting us back underway. Dragons suddenly well on top in this game. Serpent, ahoy there. Welcome along. And what a turn of events we've had 
It was all Titans early. And now, straight through go the Dragons. Support on the outside. They are just tearing them to pieces now at will. Tackle 320 out. Front foot ball. Big line up to the left. Hunt takes it to the line. Short ball. Murdoch Masilla is taken down inside the 10. It's all Dragons here. Sullivan kicks it into the end goal. Sewer chasing. But the Titans just get back and tap it over the dead ball line. But this game has just completely swung. The Titans have just been doing everything possible. Everything possible to destroy themselves. And it's succeeded. From 12 points to two ahead, they are staring at a 22-12 deficit. And now a short dropout doesn't go the 10. We've got a penalty right in front of the post. Surely the Dragons take the two. Take the two and go. They do take the two. And they're going to go two converted tries ahead here. 24-12, it's about to be. What a nightmare scenario that this has turned into for the Titans. And is that Sam Verrills now walking to the sideline? It is. Sam Verrills is off. I wonder if that's a planned replacement or if there's something up here. He doesn't look very happy, Sam Verrills. Lomax still lining up this penalty. It's so easy. He could flick it over. And there it is, 24 points to 12. Dragons. What a turnaround we've seen. Actually, a lot of people tipped the Dragons, Bobsy. It was a very split, a very, very split 50-50 right down the middle, I think, for the Wasted World of Sports tipping contest. 24-12, two converted tries ahead. 30 minutes to go. Uh, who did Robert pick? Uh, Robert picked the Titans, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Robert M went Titans. Because he always goes to the Queensland teams, you see. Oh, they're getting quick play of the ball. Little keeps it alive. The Dragons are just destroying them at the moment. And knocked on by Shop. This will be Dragons ball again. I tell you what, when the when the Dragons wrestled momentum away in this game, they just absolutely ran away with it, didn't they? Second half possession, 85%. Unbelievable scenes. Still such a long time left in this one. Only two converted tries, but... Jeez. They need a big stroke of fortune here, the Titans. I can't remember the last time I've seen a game just completely flip on its head so quickly. And now Tino's caught up in the play of the ball. They don't want to give away a six again. The Dragons playing with confidence. Front foot ball, all the momentum, everything going their way at the moment. It is going to take a huge turnaround here for the Titans. 
especially if the Dragons walk away with more points here. Hunt out the back to Sloan. Sloan looking threatening every time he gets the ball down this end of the field. Fifth and last Dragons, they're 10 out. Hunt kicks right across field. Pressure on the kick chase, it's taken well. There's a penalty though to the Dragons. Take the two, take the two. Take the two, go beyond the two converter tries in the lead, surely. It's a gift, two points. Oh, and it's a blatant escort by Kieran Foran. Blatant escort. Shaka Hearts, welcome back, mate. Boy. I can't remember when it was that uh, that you... Oh, you saw the high tackle from Saifidi. It was massive, wasn't it? Okay, so you left in the last game. I was just thinking to myself, imagine if you if you left when the Titans were up 12 points to two, and then suddenly you've come back after a while and gone, what the hell happened? What happened here? It's about to be 26-12 in favor of the Dragons is what happened here as Zach Lomax lines up another shot at penalty goal. And the Titans from 12 points to two up are suddenly staring at almost an insurmountable deficit. 26 points to 12. The Dra I love seeing the Dragons take the two. They've been taking the two all night. They took the two to start the game. They took the two to go two converter tries ahead. They took the two to go 14 ahead. Dragons, see? Anthony Griffin knows what's what. Take the two. Second half possession, 87%. Dragons, my God. That is insane. No wonder. And and look at the meters they're making just at will here. They are just bulldozing their way upfield. Ten or so meters every run. Tackle four up to halfway. Tackle five. Another ten meters. And then post contact. Fifth and last. They're inside 40 out from the line. High ball. The kick chase is good. They've let it bounce, the Titans. They've just watched it. And then it's knocked on by the Dragons. Let off the hook there, the Titans. Let off the hook big time. And it's a zero tackle for them. Can they try and wrestle some momentum back? There is still plenty of time left in this game. 25 minutes still left to go. But the Dragons' defense is stepping up from where it was in the first half. This is their game to lose now, the Dragons. Fifth and last. Titans 40 out. Foran with the high ball. Ravalawa takes it under no pressure at all, although he did make it difficult on himself, falling over his own feet almost. But the Dragons, well on top here. Solid defense from the Titans, but, geez, it's going to take a lot more than that. Fifth and last here, Dragons, a better set defensively from the Titans. And maybe that mistake has just sapped some of the momentum out of them. Fifth and last, it's a looping high ball. Pressure on Brimson. He gets up and he gets away from the defense. He has his pants pulled down. Not quite as bad as Tedesco. <clears throat> but up over halfway now, the Titans on tackle two. Here's an opportunity for them. <clears throat> Dustin Fisher, you need the Titans to win. I've got some bad news for you, mate. They are not looking good at all.
They were looking good to start the game. Titans, of course, skipped out early to a 12 points to two lead, and then they've done sod all since. Oh, we've got a head clash here. Joe Stimson has clashed heads with Jacob Little. Oh, it wasn't Jacob Little. It was uh, Toby Couchman. Jacob Little was in the tackle. Couchman came in over the top, and there was a bit of a head clash there. So he'll be off for HIA here, Toby Couchman. HIA bound. Another one for the day. <clears throat> 23 minutes to go. 26 points to 12 in favor of the Dragons. <laughs> Vopsy says Toby should go sit on the couch, man. Well, I'll tell you, that's exactly where he's off to because I think he's done for the night. I don't think they'll even risk him. He was on debut, Couchman. I don't think they'll run him back out there. That will be his night, I dare say, whether he passes the HIA or not. Fifth and last Titans, they go short side, four, and there's nobody left to pass it to. They've made a complete cack of it, the Titans, and that'll be a double knock-on and Dragon's ball. Running it on the fifth and last, but they were not lined up properly for that, especially on the short side. Players who get injuries in their debut become gods. Is that right? Well, keep an eye on keep an eye on the name Toby Couchman. And a penalty now to the Dragons. It's just going from bad to worse here for the Titans. From bad to worse. Penalty for not clearing the ruck. <clears throat> Up into Titans territory early in the tackle count again. And they will be hot on the attack at the end of this set. Bird runs it straight over the top of Foran. Bird picked him out of the line and said, yes, sir, I'll have a piece of that. Sloan up to the 20, tackle four. They stay the short side, down the left here. Little takes it forward. They're 10 out. Fifth and last. Hunt steps back to the blind side. There's the gap opens up here. Hunt flicks it out the back, through the legs, tunnel ball style. Titans get the ball. And it will be a handover. They survived that one, the Titans. But the Dragons looking good. 20 minutes to go in this contest. And I can't really say uh, see any way back here for the Titans. It is a long, long road back anyway. Shaka Hart says, so if Graham gets four matches, how long do you think Saifidi will be suspended? Well, it has to be six to eight weeks, surely. I said it at the time. I said it on stream at the time. The precedent was set with Wade Graham, so Saifidi has to get six to eight for that. Comparatively, it was that much worse. Oh, Tanner Boyd, fifth and last, puts the high ball up, and it floats over the sideline on the full... And things just continue to go downhill for the Titans here.
It has certainly not been a happy night after the first 15 minutes. I think it was 15 minutes. Eight, about, about the 20-minute mark. Around the 20-minute mark, the Titans were up 12 points to two. And everything was looking rosy. But the Dragons, they've really clicked into gear here. Lomax bumping off one. Takes it up to the 20-meter line. A set restart. A set restart here for the Dragons. And they will have a full set well inside Titans territory. Laurie takes it forward. Just settles it in front of the posts here on tackle three. They go left. An early kick. It's covered off nicely, though, by Boyd. And the Titans come away with it. Just hanging on here. Just clinging. But look at the lack of enthusiasm in the Titans' attack. They're all bunched up here. Nobody wants to take the hit up. Foreign dummies a kick on the third, takes it into contact. Jaden Campbell ready to come onto the field. Can he spark something? <clears throat> Foreign on the fifth and last puts it straight up in the air, like literally straight up in the air and knocks it on. 17 and a half minutes to go. 26-12 in favor of the Dragons. Running out of time here quickly, the Titans. Dragons just need to control the flow and not do anything silly. Lomax, another solid run. Tackle two, 40 out. From dummy half, finding space. Jacob Little, a darning run. Third tackle here, Dragons. Bird to Laurie. Laurie, post-contact meters again. And it's the fourth tackle. 20 out. Bird, dummies, goes on his own. Now offloads. Hunt kicks into the end goal. The Titans get back and tap it over the dead ball line. No chances taken. A result for the Dragons, though. Good vision there by Ben Hunt. Saw that nobody was at home. And they're going to get another set of six here, the Dragons. And Ben Hunt showing all his experience here, just controlling this game. The dropout bounces. It bounces kindly, though. And Suli. Suli has it ripped away from him. One-on-one. -on -one. It's play on. The referee feeling sorry for the Titans here. Something's finally gone their way. There was absolutely more than one in the tackle there when it was stripped away. There was three in the tackle, as a matter of fact. And, uh, yeah, the officials are starting to feel sorry for the hapless Titans here. And they're starting to give them a little bit of a rub just to get them back into this contest. That was actually a, that was actually a horrendous call. It was deemed a one-on-one -on -one strip. There were no less than three men in the tackle at the time. But anyways, is that is that a little stroke of luck that the Titans need? No, it's not because they've now lost the ball in contact in the play the ball. And the Dragons will get the ball back on halfway. <clears throat> Captain's challenge... Titans are challenging this. I dare say that that was a little bit of a realization that he got the last call wrong, and that was the that was the even up. That's what I think happened personally. He's realized in the spur of the moment that he cocked up the last call, and that was the square up. But whatever it was, it's Dragon's ball now. Tackle one, 40 out from the Titans line. 14 and a half to go. And Jack Bird's been getting involved at first receiver a lot here in the past 10 or so minutes. Oh, and all over the play the ball area. 
the Titans. Play on is the call. The, the officials are definitely starting to feel sorry for the Titans here. Bird at first receiver again. Short ball to Murdoch. Masilla dragging the defense with him. He's held up a meter short of the line on tackle four. To the left of the post they are. Big open side to the right. A short ball to Laurie. And there is a man who deserves a try. Laurie. What an absolute machine he has been. And that is game, set, and match. St. George Illawarra Dragons. 30 points to 12. Kick to come. And if ever somebody did a performance worthy of try, Blake Laurie. That man deserves it tonight. He's been an absolute machine. He's still out there on the field. He's still running. And he's there crashing through two defenders to score right under the posts. 30 points to 12 to the Dragons. Kick to come. That is the final nail in the coffin of the Titans today. St. George Dragons, a lot of people's pick for the wooden spoon. Take a bow today. Dragons, it is your day. Well and truly. A shaky start. But they have just run over the top of the Titans here. And a dominating victory. Lomax from right in front should make this 32 points to 12. And this is becoming an absolute blowout now. Conversion successful. 32 points to 12. 12 and a half minutes to go. This game is well and truly out of reach for the Titans now. And this is starting to become embarrassing for them. We said it at the top of the stream, didn't we? We were talking about it. Were the Titans really that good last week defensively or was it just the Tigers are so, so awful? I think we had our answer in the game before and that answer has now been confirmed in this one. The Tigers are really that bad and the Titans are nowhere near as good as they were made to look last week. Short kickoff and it falls for Suli. Uh, Gary Jones says, does it mean Dragons are top of the table? Um, probably not because they would have had zero for and against. They would have got the two points for the buy in round one, but they would be at zero for and against. Oh, but then again, points differential will be 20, won't it? So if it stays as it is... Or more. Yeah, the Dragons will be plus 20. Which is better than the Dolphins plus 16. So yes, they would. Interesting. Top of the table after playing one game. They're on the attack again here. And Sewer is caught on the fifth and last. Oh, Manly are plus 25, are they? Okay, so the Dragons will need... The Dragons will need another try. Yeah, Manly have the buyer this week, and they're plus 25. So it will be Manly on top of the table unless unless the Dragons can get another converter try. All right, we've got that established. Good stuff. <coughs> oh, God. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me very much. All right, Titans are on the attack. Ten minutes to go. They're finally firing a shot. 
Jojo Fafita steps back in field. Is chopped down fifth and last. Ten out from the line. Campbell steps. Passes it to the Dragons. But they were up too quickly there, St. George. And they give away a penalty. 32 points to 12. So, yes, at the moment, the Dragons will be sitting in second place. Manly on top. Oh, Tino Fasua Mali. Whatever the frick his name is. I just call him Big Tino. Big Tino has scored. That was cheeky. No one was ready for that. It was a penalty. He's tapped and gone. Nobody was paying attention. And it's a try for Tino, a try for the Titans. And there goes potential top spot on the ladder for the Dragons. There goes second spot even. I think this try, if it's converted, even puts them below the Dolphins on for and against. So we were spending all that time working out numbers and figuring out how the Dragons get to the top of the table, and it doesn't matter anymore. The Titans have scored, and the pending conversion will now put them below the Dolphins in the final wash-up at the end of this round. And it will be Manly on top. The Manly Seagulls on the back of, and the conversion is successful, by the way. 32 points to 18. Manly off the back of winning the preseason tournament, the preseason competition, are now sitting top of the table after two rounds. With the Dolphins in second place, and at the moment, as it stands, with eight minutes to go in this game, the Dragons find themselves in third place. But still, eight minutes. Can't even get one week bragging rights. Sorry, Gary. It was looking good for a moment there, but then as soon as we started doing the calculations, it just all went to bollocks, didn't it? And the Titans, with nothing to lose now, are just Harlem globetrottering this ball around the place. Jaden Campbell, he's had a good effort since he's come onto the field. Gets away from the first up tackle again. But tackle four here, still short of the halfway line. Seven and a half minutes to go. Out to the left, four and out the back to Brimson. Brimson out to Pereira. And they're tackled fifth and last here, the Titans. Oh, what have we got there? Harry Roblox. Thank you very much for the sub. High ball on the fifth and last. Sloan takes it comfortably. He gets away from one and he's brought down. 11 outs from his own line. I can't imagine that the Dragons are going to do too much now. 32 points to 18 up, seven minutes to go. I dare say that they will just go through their sets and, uh, and just run the time out. Take their victory. <clears throat> Zempai says, what's interesting about this is that the Broncos-Dragons game will determine which of them stays inside the four next week. Big contest coming up next week at Suncorp. Broncos-Dragons. <laughs> Vopsy says, Ben Hunt going to get flashbacks from the 2015 grand final. The poor son of a bitch probably still has nightmares about that, to be fair. But then Ben Hunt, he can have some very good dreams, can't he, at uh, State of Origin level. Some fabulous dreams for Ben Hunt when it comes to State of Origin. But yes, I dare say a moment like that 2015 Grand Final is something that does stay with you forever. There's no question about it. How could it not? Fifth and last here, Titans, 30 out from the line, four and puts it high. Sloan drops it. It goes backwards, and the Dragons regather possession. 
Five and a half minutes left. No enthusiasm left. <laughs> Nothing left here for the Dragons. They are just going through the motions, running this game out. They don't need to. Well, Rabalawa's going to keep playing. Offloads the ball. And Fierne is taken on tackle three. 20 out from his own line. Nothing left to play for, really, here. The Dragons just going through the motions, getting to the end of this contest, taking their two points and planting themselves inside the top four at the end of round two. Fifth and last it is. Taken on the fall by Brimson. And back he comes, 30 out from the Titans line. Can they bag another consolation try? That's all they've got left to play for. With four and a half left, all they've got is consolation. Trellmitz, Trellmitz, thank you very much for subscribing, mate. Welcome along to the Wasted World of Sports. So four minutes... Jaden Campbell has tried his heart out ever since he got on the field. Fifth and last Titans, 40 out, four and puts it high again. Sloan takes it nicely this time and brings it back. So this game just continues to wind down. Under four minutes to go now. We need to start looking at next week. The Telstra Premiership round three. Coming up, follow all the action here on the Waste of World of Sports. I'll be doing Thursday night. Thursday night, 7 p.m. Manly Sea Eagles, Parramatta Eels. That should be a blockbuster. Friday, double header, Newcastle Knights, Redcliffe Dolphins. Followed by the big match of the round, the Roosters and the Rabbitohs. Saturday, I'm going to be out. Saturday, I'm off to see Stephen K. Amos live. So I will be away. I can't do any of the games on Saturday. <clears throat> Maybe Michelle will do the Broncos-Dragons game. We'll see if Michelle wants to do the, the Broncos-Dragons. Try and get that set up for her. But yes, I'll be busy on Saturday. Off to Stephen K. Amos. And then Sunday, we've got Bulldogs Tigers. And Raiders Sharks. I'll definitely be doing the Raiders Sharks game. Ah, Michelle will be in Melbourne. Okay, so Michelle won't be doing the Broncos-Dragons game. Okay, so there'll be no games Saturday. So there you go. Uh, sea Eagles eels on Thursday. roosters Rabbitohs on Friday. There'll be no games Saturday because we're both busy. And uh, Raiders-Sharks on Sunday. So that's what we've got coming up. Wasted World of Sports, NRL. 32 points to 18 here. A minute and a half left to go as this game just drizzles down to a finish. Here go the Titans. Oh, Pereira looked like he'd been pulled down by the ponytail. And a penalty to the Titans. One minute and a half left. 32-18. Can they bag another consolation try? Looking at the Dragons' next five games. The Broncos away. The Sharks at home. The Dolphins at home. The Titans away again. And then away to the Raiders in round seven. So the Dragons are playing the Titans again in round six. That seems pretty early.
Yes, Michelle does love the cross-country basketball, but then Michelle loves proper basketball as well, so probably not surprising. Inside the last minute here, and a penalty to the Dragons. Their captain's challenged it for some reason. Who really cares at this point? It certainly is a brutal sport, Michelle. Goddamn brutal to sit and watch. Oh, that's not what you meant? My bad. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> notice this. Notice this. Titans are trash. Yes, they are. Very interesting. The Titans looked good last week, but then we saw how awful the, the Tigers played in the game before this one. So it started me thinking, maybe, just maybe, the Titans aren't actually that good and the Tigers are just horrible. Psh. Your Honour, I present the evidence to the court. The Titans are a complete and bloody shambles. So I would say after the first two rounds, Tigers are clearly the worst team in the competition at the moment. Clearly. Heads and bloody tails above everybody else in terms of the worst team in the competition. I would have to say that the Titans are a very close second. And probably, probably the Raiders. Maybe the Raiders have been the third worst team so far after two rounds. Bobsy says Titans are not second worst. No? Who who would you have? Who would you have, Bobsy? I mean, I think we can all agree the Tigers, after two rounds, are clearly the worst. Oh, maybe the Knights. Yeah, maybe the Knights, actually. Knights and Titans, very, very close for second and third worst team. But yeah, Tigers, easily the worst after two rounds. They have just been horrible. As the full-time siren finally sounds to end the misery to the Gold Coast Titans. 32 points to 18. An absolute schmozzling it has been. The Dragons. We got our first look at them. And they get away with the win here tonight. Okay, so Wasted World of Sports coming up this week. Thursday, Sea Eagles versus Eels. Let's lock that in. Uh, Friday, Roosters Rabbitohs. I'm not sure if I will be able to finish work on time for the Knights Dolphins game, but let's definitely lock in Roosters Rabbitohs. Uh, Saturday, I'm away. Michelle's away as well, so there'll be no game Saturday. And then Sunday, I'll probably I'll probably end up doing the double header. The Bulldogs and Tigers will be a nice warm up to the Raiders Sharks on Sunday. The Panthers, of course, have the bye next week. So yes, we'll see you on Thursday. Wasted World of Sports Thursday. Sea Eagles versus Eels. Uh, don't forget Discord. Feel free to join the Discord. And uh, the free NRL tipping competition. It's still not too late to join the tipping contest. If you join now, 
you don't have to start from zero points. If you join now, you get given the away teams for the first two rounds. So you won't be starting from zero because quite a few of the away teams did get up and score some victories. So it's not too late to join the official NRL Waste of World of Sports tipping contest. You just get given the away teams to start with, and then you can start putting your tips in for next round if you would like to. So that's there on the screen. There's a link in the description. If you're on YouTube, a link in the description. Otherwise, just head to tipping.nrl.com and uh, punch that join code in or search Wasted World of Sports in the uh, uh, in the competitions there and find us over there. Uh, apart from that, uh, look forward to catching you on Thursday. Christian, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo Sui, uh, game is over here. The game is over. 32 points to 18 at full time in favor of the Dragons over the Titans. It's all over. A big resounding victory for the Dragons in their first hit out of the season. We'll be back on Thursday. Sea Eagles versus the Eels. We'll catch you then. Thank you very much. I'll see you then. Cheers.